So there are things to me that are obvious about life that I can't explain to you. And I can't explain it to you, even though I explain a lot of stuff to you mm-hmm. and I share with you the advantage of my extra 18 years. Mm-hmm. But there are things that can't be explained. They have to be experienced. Yeah. So there are certain things that I just, <laughs> and I know you're going to get to it. So observing you kind of going through certain things and learning certain things, especially professionally. And I know we're going to get, <laughs> we're going to talk about the business and stuff. That's the red flag. That's, I hate Angie. I hate, I hate, I hate everybody. This is the age gap relationship red flag I see in all the age gap relationships. I'm telling you, these men are like, oh, it's so cute. Look at my girlfriend figuring out how to be an adult. And I'm like, why are you dating her? Why are you dating her? So this is Bridging the Gap, Age Difference and Marital Challenges with um, Gary and his wife, Valeria. And Valeria, this is her channel. So she's like kind of reviewing him. Like she's inviting him onto the channel. So he's like the guest. And she has 1.7 uh, or 1, 1.7 million subs. She has a million subbies, almost 2 million, which is amazing. I am i don't even know who she is. But I'm sure she is a lovely person. So let's go ahead and get it started together. Let's see. And I said to your mom, I know I'm a lot older than her. I, I love your daughter. My intention is to marry her. Our age gap is 18 years, by the way. I told your mom, I said, look, I can only imagine, like, as a parent, you might have an issue with this. And then her response to me was. How did you think the our age difference, like, would play a role in our relationship? Like, did you think about that when we got together and when we started becoming, like, getting serious? No, it, it, it. Look, I knew chronologically how much how much older I was than you. Yeah. But in terms of my interaction with you, and you specifically, I felt we had a lot in common. We had great chemistry. We still do. Mm-hmm. I never felt older than you mentally. Mm-hmm. Oh, red flag. <laughs> I'm so sorry. See, isn't that like a red flag? I never. I I'm 20 years older than you, 18, but I never felt mentally older than you. <laughs> why <laughs> wouldn't you wouldn't get your bread ex- like brain examined in case you have like a fucking tumor i'm so i'm sorry out the gate they seem lovely already i'm very excited to get to know them again if you watch this you're a human being a consciousness on this planet and i am not saying anything bad about you i'm just like everyone has a different relationship with how these things go and how these things work for them so again do not seek my validation okay oh my gosh Obviously more nuanced than that, but it matters a large portion how mature you are in relation to the other person. How old is she? Great question. I'm hoping they give us all these answers. Listen, already out the bat, it's like, oh, what is this? Right? Like, oh, Mariah said, Brit, sir, did you have a TBI? Listen, again, it just, it's a weird thing to say out loud. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm 18 years older than you, but I don't feel, you know what I'm saying? That's interesting. What are you, what a unique perspective chronologically and just like reality yeah i know i'm older than you but besides that i never felt that there was any kind of it wasn't it wasn't weird it wasn't like a novelty it wasn't strange it just you just felt like the person i love and they have a good aesthetic together they definitely look good together now again i'm pro age gap relationships i have no problem with an age gap relationship the question is what's the age gap and how young was the youngest person right so they've been together 10 years, right? Is that wrong? I think I read that. So if she's 33, then they were 23 and 43. Let's just keep watching because I don't know. I think that's what I understand, but I could be wrong on that information. They have three kids. Okay. Okay. It didn't cross my mind. Like, you know, now from a practical perspective, and I've told you this before. Well, you are a very practical guy. That's why I'm asking like your train of thought when you decided, okay, this is. So I had a friend of mine when you and I were dating, I literally talked to nobody about, about like, because I'm not, I was never the kind of person that if I was dating someone, I never needed anyone's opinion or validation because mm-hmm. I didn't care. I, okay, good. That's a good, okay. I don't know why. I know it's That's, important. I feel like it's the age. It's no, the but even beauty when I, of that. Even, even when I was younger. Really? Yeah, I never cared. It just, if I like someone. I don't want people's validation. I want, I, I trust people though to tell me if I'm like, stepping out of line or kind of like if I'm blind to something like again I go to farm brother and I'm like am I missing something because like what's you know what I mean I trust him to tell me if he thinks I'm missing something you know somebody I like somebody if I didn't like somebody I didn't like somebody right and I always found you know what I always found it strange when my friends would come to me and say hey what do you think of her 
like if like my friend would start dating somebody mm -hmm. and he'd say what do you think of her or if like uh, like a female friend of mine would say, hey, what do you think of this guy I'm dating? I'd always think it was strange. Why are you asking me? I'm like, oh. oh okay, I do do that. Well, sort of. Mm, maybe not actually. Wait. No, I don't think I do do that. No. No, of course not. Why would I do that? Oh. Hmm, I'm having an epiphany about myself. Wait, I don't think I do that. Yeah, no, I don't. Oh my gosh. Wait, relatable, bro. Okay, me and Gary are friends. No, that's true. Well, even when I even when I started dating my husband, when we started courting. I didn't like I don't send my friends pictures and go, what do you think about him? <gasps> but now I'm thinking of all my friends who do that to me. Oh, we are very different in that way. Yeah, my girlfriends are guy friends who send me pictures of people they're dating. There is more insecurity in those people than I think in me, but in a different way. Oh, that's interesting. Now. What I have done is I did go to my brother and say, hey, I'm dating this guy. I'm courting him. I think I want to marry him. I think he's the right person. There's something about him that's very special. But I want you to double check me right now as your sister, someone you've known your whole life. And just tell me if I'm out of line, if I'm fucking up somehow. And he asked me all the normal questions, like all the even my cousin. I told my cousin I was getting married and moving to Croatia. And she's like, OK, Brittany, as your older cousin, I just need to double check some stuff. I was like, hit me, girl. And she gave me the checklist and I had all the answers and we talked about it. And that's fine. But I don't like send them photos of my partners. I'm like, what do you think of them? Like, I don't do that because like, first of all, who takes a good photo? And second of all, what does a photo mean? Right. So, OK, I think that's different. Is he talking about those differences are we talking about those differences between saying, what do you think of me picking this person versus what do you think about this person? Is that the difference? What do you guys think? You know? Um, interesting. Yeah. And says, this is why I couldn't date a much older man. Seriously, how could I respect someone who somehow is the same level as someone who is 20 years younger. I mean, it's possible, which maybe that's why age gap relationships are ultimately okay. Maybe, because that's what I found when I was in high school. My 16, 17-year-old friends that were dating 26-year-old guys, 24-year-old guys, those guys were dumb. But see, now it sounds insulting. Oh, you're just as dumb as your partner. And they're like, my partner's not dumb. My partner's very smart. Oh, I'm sorry. So you're just as smart as your partner. It's the same thing. If a 24-year-old is dating a 16-year-old, that tells me like, Oh, that, oh, okay. So if you're a 40 year old dating a 20 year old, that's also like, oh, okay. And it's always like, oh, but she's so mature. He's so mature for his age. And I'm like, okay, maybe. And maybe like on a planet of 8 billion people, for sure. And like I said, I feel like my cultural background is really different because the age gap relationships there that were very extreme. Yes, those people were together till the day they died. They found love in those marriages. They weren't the same. Like culturally, it's not the same. It's not like two independent people choosing to fall in love. It's a very different cultural expectation. Like I don't think it's a fair example of a bubble where there's like people making real choices. Like were the people who were 16 and 12 years old in my family making choices? Do you know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't like to use them as the example, even though they all made their marriages work, even though they all raised happy families, even though, even though, even though. I think it's really unfair for us to be like, well, it worked for them, but did it, did it from their own choice work for them or did they do the best with what they had, which is not the same thing? I don't know. I'm not dating them. What's, what's the difference what I think of them? Right. So I always found it strange. So I never really, it never. Does he have an accent? They both sound like they have accents. Is he, what is he? What's his last name? I assume he's, what is he, Croatian? Just get Russian? Serb? What is he? Really registered to me, but one person did say to me and he kind of just blurted it out he said women live longer than men mm -hmm. you're already 18 years older than her she's gonna have to live for probably 30 years ah, after you're dead interesting and that really that's something that i had to think about that's the only thing to this day that i think is the biggest disadvantage to our age difference mm. is that i know that you're going to be alive a lot like you're going to live a long time after I'm gone and that 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 kind of bothers me not that you're going to live a long time it bothers me that I won't be around for it <laughs>
<laughs> um, Stephanie, thank you for giving us an amazing comment. Stephanie said, I dated a 27 year old when I was 16. And in hindsight, he was definitely a loser. <laughs> That is the best comment I've ever read in my life. I'm just saying there tends to be a pattern, you know? He sounds like a typical North American to me. Really? Why do I feel like I hear an accent? It's my bias. It's my bias. Right. And that I'm going to leave you alone. So that to me is like the saddest thing about our age gap. That's the only negative that I can think of today. Mm -hmm. there, there might be some negatives in the future. Like when I, let's say I want to retire. Right. You're not going to be retired. Mm. So there might be just some like lifestyle. Okay, so they both work. That's a little modern relationship. We love that. Um, yeah. Kind of not problems, but just challenges. Sure. Not even challenges. I, I, I mean, well, what can the challenge be? Instead of living, I don't know, somewhere on the beach, uh, we're gonna have to be somewhere more in a like you know in a city where you can continue doing what you do. Right. But uh, to me, I'm not a. Oh, he's supportive. Okay, good energy. I like their energy so far. Actually, out of all the age gap relationships we've seen. This has been the best energy. Yeah, other, we had one this. other couple that was really great, but they were different because they got together when she was like 30s. But he, okay, they have the best energy so far. On the beach, as long as I'm with you and at mm -hmm. that time, as long as the, the kids are somewhere in, in our vicinity or yeah. like easily accessible to them and their families, then I don't, I'm good. What did your mom say when you told her that you are going to marry a 20-year-old? Nothing. <laughs> Really? Yeah, my mother, it, it's different. Listen, when I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 38, I'm, I was 38 years old already. That's true, a grown man. There's not a conversation. If right. I would have come to her and said I'm marrying a, I, I'm marrying a, a, if I was 20 and say I'm marrying a girl and she's also 20, then she'd mm -hmm. probably say something about it because mm -hmm. I would still be her kind of kid, but I wasn't her child anymore. It's funny because I think for me, uh, when I told my mom about meeting you, I don't know if it's the culture, I guess, maybe like the Russian culture. It wasn't like a shock to her. Again, I always dated older. And I think for her that also it wasn't like a negative per se. She just I've I've heard that about certain like Russian or areas around the world. It's like not it's less a big deal for the age gap relationship. So I'm not that surprised. You know what I mean? just wanted, I guess, to know that it's like, is this a person that you love? Is this a person that, you know, you can build a life with? Is this a person that's going to... Sorry, for those um, who missed the intro to this, let me send the video into the chat so you guys can check them out. This is Valeria Lebowski. Lebowski? I don't know how to say their names, bros. Be there when you need him to. And, I, and that's it. Like That's why I think when we start... Yeah, wait, great question, Kay. If she was 20 and he was 38, how long were they dating? Maybe a few months. Maybe they did like a courting thing. When I went on social media and stuff and I started showing our lives and when I started getting these like age gap questions or like, you know, kind of uh, people being shocked, I kind of didn't understand. Well, I think you're being really polite. People were rude about it. People were rude people, about it. People <laughs> yeah. still are rude about it. To me, it kind of... Ooh, I kind of like his bluntness. And I, I didn't really understand because I was like, yeah, he's older than me, but... And? <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it wasn't anything like out of the ordinary. I remember when, you know, we started dating and about... 10 days after we started dating, I said to you, you're going to be my wife. Because mm -hmm. I knew. I knew you were going to be my wife. I told you, it's not going to happen. I'm not asking yet. So you don't have to freak out. But that's where we're going and that's, what, that's what's going to go down. Mm -hmm. I think you were a little, you didn't show it to me. I didn't sense in you that you were scared at all. But I think inside you may have been a little scared. And that's when you went to your mom. And you said to me, when I said that to you, you said, come and meet my mother. And if my mother approves of us dating, we're going to continue dating. Yeah. I said, no problem. We went to meet your mother. She looked at me. I think I had already met her briefly before. Yeah. Probably at a, like a Russian restaurant somewhere. Social, yeah. Not socially. I think she was the manager or owner of the place and I was at a party <laughs> or something. <laughs> she came outside. She goes, come with me outside for a smoke. And I said, I don't smoke. She goes, just come with me outside. <laughs> right? She just wanted to, she wanted to talk to me. So I went outside with her and uh, she goes, she looked at me. She goes, what do you want? <laughs> like not not even polite just like what, what do you want like that Make was it wasn't like small talk and stuff she like we got outside like she was walking ahead of me i remember it so clearly she stopped she turned around she looked at me she goes what do you want <laughs> like what are your intentions right 
man, I said to her, listen, I, I, I love her. I, I love your daughter. My intention is to marry her. This was like on the 11th day of us dating. I said, my intention is to marry her. And I said to your mom, I remember, I said, look, I know I'm a lot older than her. And to be honest with you, if I had a daughter and she came to me with a man that's as much older than, you know, than her as I am older than Valeria. Our um, age gap is 18 years, by the way. 17 and change. Yeah. It's like 17 and three quarters. Yeah. Every month matters. Um, 17 and quarters. <laughs> and, and I told your mom, I said, look, I understand like as a, Parent, as a, yeah. Not as a, no, I wasn't a parent. I said, I can imagine. Uh -huh. I wasn't a parent at the time. Okay, the freak is that's like the most depressing comment I've ever read in my life, though. Old man, young woman, dude gets kids and lineage, and wife couldn't care for him till death. He dies and leaves her with money. So the woman ends up rich and able to have sex with young men. Sounds awful. That sounds so awful. That does sound awful. You're talking about your companion for life. Like, this is about losing your companion. You know what I mean? Like for some people, it's about companionship. For me, my marriage is about companionship. Losing my partner would be the, like that is going to be so sad. You know what I mean? Like that's what's going to be devastating is like, yeah, it's going to happen. We'll move past it. Of course, people die, but it's going to be devastating. I'm not going to have my companion. He's not going to have his. My dad is terrified every day, not literally, but my parents will radically accept it when they die. But it will be so sad when my dad isn't with my mom or my mom isn't with my dad. They love it. They spend every day, all day together. My parents spend basically all day together. They work together. They spend dinner and lunch together. Like, obviously, they have their own hobbies and everything. But that kind of sounds sad, you know? But I guess for some people, like, they don't think about companionship in that way. Or they think about companionship in a more of a casual way. Like, stay with me until I'm too old. Or stay with me until you're ready to move on. Which is, like, fine. I think I'm just looking for, like, long life companionship. And yes, don't, like, drown in the sorrow of your partner dying. But also, it's still sad when they die. It's not like they, they want to, like... It's not like, oh, yay, my husband's dead. Now I get to have sex with 20-year-olds. It's like, oh, gross. <laughs> Why? Don't be gross. <laughs> I can only imagine like as a parent, you might have an issue with this because although it may have seemed normal to your mom because she grew up in a very different culture where it was normalized, mm -hmm. I didn't. I grew up in Canada. When I was 20, my girlfriend oh, was Canada. 19. Mm -hmm. Right? So I was concerned that I didn't want to offend her. So I said, uh, look, I, I understand if it's a problem for you, but we can talk it, we can talk it out and I'll help you get over that problem. Mm -hmm. like, I just told her, I'll help you get over it. Meaning it wasn't, I, I didn't say to her, if you're not okay with it, I'm going to go away. I said, if you're not okay with it, I'm going to help you get over this problem that you have of not being okay with it. Right. And then her response to me was, if she's okay dating you, continue dating and see what happens. I said, okay. She goes, okay. <laughs> And that was that. And then he took a shot of vodka. But you know what? I do. Well, yeah. But the oh. Harmony. Oh. Watching my grandpa say bye to my grandma when she passed after being together 62 years was so heartbreaking. Oh. Oh. Same, bro. Same. When my grandma's died, bro. Especially my dad's dad, dude. Watching my dad's dad, because I didn't see my mom's dad have to lose his wife. I wasn't there. But watching my dad's dad lose his, his my nana, you saw the difference, bro. You saw the difference. It was, ugh. Ooh. I do remember when ugh. I bought the ring, I came over to your mom's. I came over, you and I were together. I had the ring and I had to like ask in the absence of your father, I had to ask your mother for your hand in marriage. Mm -hmm. So I remember I, we always we always have we always have important meetings outside. Me and your mom. I said to her, uh, "Can you come outside with me? I want to show you. I bought a new car." So I use that as an example. I just bought a new car, and I said, "Oh, I want to show you this new car that I bought." Meanwhile, I don't, it didn't matter, but she's like, oh, "Okay." So I go outside. Oh, she looks at the car. Oh, nice, nice, nice. I go listen. I'm going to propose to Valeria. She's like, I knew it. She goes, you got the ring? I go, yeah, I got the ring. And I showed her the ring. She's like, okay, good. She goes, when are you going to do it? I said, we're going to go to Israel. I'm going to propose to her. I said, don't you say anything. Israel? Israel? What are these people's lineage? This is so interesting. I said, don't you say anything. She goes, I'm not going to say anything. Did she say anything? No, nothing. No? It was, uh, no, it was. Running a podcast is so interesting. 
because I feel like they would have already had that conversation. But everything here seems really natural. The way they talk is natural. The energy is good. I'm not attracted to either of them, like, but they're very attractive. Does that make sense? Like, they're both very attractive, but I'm not attracted to either of them. Not that this matters, but I'm just saying, like, bubbles, right? But it is interesting. Something about their dynamic is, like, it is nice. Like, they've obviously known each other very long, and they're very natural on a podcast, you know? Inch interesting. Russian Jew is very common. True. A Russian Jew from Canada? Interesting. It was awesome. I love your the relationship you have with my mom, actually. That's one of the things that I think makes our family so special and unique. You guys are really close. I have a good relationship with her. We have our ups and downs. But our ups and downs are mostly situational, meaning when I get stressed, I get a little more like... Whoa, Annalise with the T. I subbed to Val uh, Valeria's channel a long time ago, but rarely watch. But when I see them now talking, it seems like their relationship feels strained. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like she's putting off. Interesting. I feel like that's what she's putting off. This video, for context, was a month ago, four weeks ago. Like distant. Mm -hmm. But it's something I'm working on because I do value her a lot. The reason your mother and I get along, and it's going to sound like... I don't know. It's going to sound almost like it's this is a forced statement or it's fake, but it's not. It's because your mother is a very good and moral person. Mm -hmm. She really is. And the more I think about it and the more I see examples of other people where that morality isn't there, mm -hmm. I value your mom more and more. Because your mother from day one, even though I'm an older guy and even though I had already, you know, kind of established myself financially when you and I met. Does anybody know what he does? I never felt from her that she ever tried to take advantage of me mm -hmm. or that she was ever anything but respectful to me. So it's not a secret that your mom, she can go off sometimes. Mm -hmm. She sometimes can be abrasive. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean it in... Like a gold digging mother-in-law, which is a thing that exists. Is that what he's talking about? Like a gold digging mother-in-law? Is that what he's saying? Who is he? Gary. See? New bubbles. I love it. Who is this person who obviously kind of claims to have money apparently? Co-founder of DealFine.com. Net worth, according to Google, $40 million. Okay, so, he, you know, middle class. <laughs> I'm joking. He's a joke. In a bad way. And I'm certainly not bad-mouthing her. Mm -hmm. But she can be abrasive. And she often is. But she's... She's Russian. Yeah, no, but she is. What's she, abrasive? But listen, she comes from a place where... What is this? What is this? Is this tension? You have to like fight for survival. She yeah. came from a very rough place and I appreciate that. Very different from where I grew up. I was in Canada since the age of three, so I didn't have the challenges she had. Yeah. She's rough. She can be rough. Ooh, I'm not going to play with you. Where's, where's my... There definitely is like a clear age gap between the two of them. It's interesting. See him here? He looks like an old, like a middle-aged man. And then she looks like a, his daughter. <laughs> it's not funny. Um, I just think it's interesting. Yeah. Whoop. I zoomed in too much. My bad. Okay. I'm really trying here, but the boomer in me is not working. I... This is a joke. I'm assuming it's a joke. When she wanted to go somewhere, but I didn't want to go. Now she's mad because she got what she wanted, but I'm not excited. I assume that's a meme. Okay, cuties, cute family. All right. Oh, that's not her. Hmm. 
Okay. She's mm-hmm. elegant, but she can be rough and tough and mean. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when she would talk to certain people in a certain way that I was like, you know, I was shocked that she would. She never in the 12 years, going on 13 years that she's known me, she's never said anything to me that would offend me, even though I know it's in her nature to offend people sometimes. <laughs> but she's Yes, Stephanie. I don't know what it is, but maybe it's his presumptu- presumptu- presumptive nature, like, quote, I'm going to help you get over this, or quote, you're going to be my wife, quote. Yeah, it's like that energy from him that is not my favorite. I don't love it. You know what I mean? It's not like my vibe. Like, I don't like that in a person because I'm like, very you know i'm not really a big fan but like okay like some people like it because it's very like confident it's probably why he's great at business if i'm gonna be really fair he's probably great at business for this reason because it's like basically saying i know what the customer wants and i'm gonna give it to them that's kind of how you can look at dating is like i know what you want i'm gonna give it to you and that's actually how the mother treated him to be fair the mother also said like what are you doing with my daughter and he's like look i'm gonna give you what you want i'm gonna be like i'm gonna give you what you want don't worry so to be fair he did sell He did sell, right? So like, to be fair, versus in my marriage, like I called my parents and I said, I'm getting married. So, and they were like, what? Don't get married. Who is this person? Like they were very unsure at first. And then now they're very much on board. But before, when they first heard me, because, you know, they didn't know I was dating anybody. I didn't tell them, which is probably why they were surprised the most, right? My parents didn't know I was talking to somebody. They had no idea. Oh my God, I just realized that now. Wait, did I not? Yeah, I didn't tell them I was talking to somebody. To be fair, it happened very quickly. <clears throat> yeah, but before they knew it, I was on the same day I told them I was dating somebody. I was also telling them that like, um, I'm also going to date someone. So. I'm going to marry someone, I mean. Wait, is it lagging? Is the stream lagging? Whoa, is the stream lagging? It shouldn't be, but it might just be YouTube. Blame YouTube. Never done it with me. She always knew not to do it with me. All right. And it's out of her love for you and out of her love for me too. But mainly it's out of her love for you because she understands Mm -hmm. she can't talk to your husband that way. So I always respect. She's never done it with me. She always knew not to do it with me. And it's out of her certain way that I was like, you know, I was shocked that she would. She never in the 12 years, going on 13 years that she's known me, she's never said anything to me that would offend me, even though I know it's in her nature to offend people sometimes. <laughs> but she's never done it with me. She always knew not to do it with me. All right. And it's out of her love for you and out of her love for me too. But mainly it's out of her love for you because she understands mm-hmm. she can't talk to your husband that way. So I always respected her for kind of... I guess. Oh, is that the noise? Wait, did I make the noise? Did I make it unconsciously? Did I make the noise? Do you make that sound for a sec? I just had to read. Wait, the sound? Is that the breathy noise? I don't think so. I think it's like a... (laughs) I don't explain it. I don't know. I have to hear it back to see if it's the same noise. It's like a... Anyway, this is not important. We're going to derail. Um... Because I make a lot of breathing noises. But like there's a specific one I make that's really weird. Because I don't know I'm making it. But I don't know if that's the noise because I feel like I made that one on purpose. But I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. His. I think what he means to say is, um, well, first it'd just be inappropriate. If I was his mother-in-law, it would just be inappropriate to like be antagonistic to my son-in-law. You know what I mean? So I don't think. But he's saying it like a mafia. Like, yo, it's disrespectful. Don't fucking do that to me. And I'm just like, uh, it's not about like out of love for your daughter, out of love for your husband. It just should be about your values. You know what I mean? I I think he's saying what I would say, but I would say different. I would say, yeah, obviously it's disrespectful and inappropriate for me to be antagonistic to my son-in-law. Don't do that. Don't be rude. But at the same time, I wouldn't phrase it the way he did. And I think how you phrase things matters, right? I feel like the way you phrase things matters, but it could mean the same thing. Like I, yeah, like she knows better. Yeah, Mariah, it feels like a threat almost. Like he feels like a threat. This is why I'm not into hyper-masculine men because they always feel like they're going to fucking fight you over nothing. You know what I mean? That's why I don't like them because, and I'm stereotyping, a lot of them just feel like they're always wanting to fight you. And I was like, why are you fighting me? Why are you being so rude? Like my dad is a masculine man, but he's a gentleman. 
My dad is a gentleman, okay? Like, in a very specific way, it's not a threat. Like, he's not, like, threatening you. Like, it's just rude. It's about having good manners versus saying, like, so maybe that's what it is about the energy I don't like. I'm like, why are you, th why are you threatening me, bro? Kind of going against her nature and always being, like, and to this day. So mm -hmm. it's it's great. <clears throat> no, I love your mom. When we met, did we have anything? Yeah, I think, to be fair, uh, Renbe, I, I, I think you're right. I think it's just the way he talks. I think it is just the way he talks. But, okay, here's a question for you guys. Does it matter how someone talks? Because I think it does. I think the vibes are going to be off. Like, I do think it matters how you talk. Now, I don't think it nev morally necessarily says anything about your character and the way you talk, but it could indicate your underlining belief about the way you talk. Right? So what do you guys think about that? Because, again... I like wholesome, sweet, loving. I like, um, oh my gosh, my husband has such good manners. Like he would never disrespect my parents. Or oh my gosh, my parents have such good manners. They would never be antagonistic, right? It's like, oh yeah, we have such good values. We would never do that because it's disrespectful to anybody. Even if like we're a little bit blunt or bratty with other people, it's like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? So yeah, maybe it's like, I, again, it's it's fine. It's all good at the end of the day. But I don't know. I don't. His language choices are fine in general. I'm not moralizing it. I just for me, it'd be like. Mm. Mm. It's not positive. It's like. She would never do that. She would never talk to your husband that way. It's like, what are you, the king of France? Like thing in common, you feel my thought process on this and at the time and even now, I don't look at compatibility yeah. with you or just in general between people as like sharing common interests. So if you liked crocheting mm -hmm. and I didn't like crocheting, it doesn't mean we're incompatible. It right. just means you you like a stupid hobby. But oh, wait, 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 wait. What's stupid, crocheting or hobbies? Like, see, his language is violent. <laughs> I'm going to say it right now. He has violent language. But yeah, okay, I agree with him. <laughs> I mean, who the hell, cro who crochets? Why are you <gasps> He's talking, I love to crochet. Thank you for asking. I was just telling my partner I need to get new crochet needles so I can crochet my mama's scarf for Christmas. I was literally just saying that to my partner that I need new crochet needles. So yeah, he's a hater, bro. He thinks he's better than other people. He's like, I'm better than you. I'm 40, I'm worth 40 fucking million. I'm better than you. Do you want Celine? Oh, shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Celine. I'm sorry. Celine does great crochet, by I'm the sure. way. My point, my point is, is that like things like hobbies and stuff like that 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 to me is not i don't think that's relevant I, you know where you and i have something in common and kind of what what really binds us <sighs> is our you know it's our morality it's our belief systems yeah sure. and that's th th that's what matters the fact that you you know i like sports cars or, or and you like uh i don't know like uh reading a lot like who cares like who cares if that's it's not the same thing it doesn't matter it's irrelevant so do you feel like be uh I bet he would find it relevant if she liked to do nude art paintings or uh, model for nude art. Or maybe he'd be more interested if her hobby was um, doing a pole class or teaching twerking on Snapchat. Like, it does matter. Like, I know a lot of people think it doesn't matter, but lots of people have different hobbies that lots of people aren't going to like. If you're a vegan, you probably don't want a partner who has a hobby of hunting. Like, okay, hobbies matter. Um, to an extent, you know, being with someone that's much younger than you, myself, uh, does he even know what she likes? He did sound like he was hesitating, but I'm sure she likes to read, uh, influence your perspective or view on life. Yeah. Yeah, it has. It reminds me of the sweet ignorance of youth. Mm. So what? Who? Huh? It's not the same thing. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. <laughs> so do you feel like being with someone that's much younger than you, myself, uh, influence your perspective or view on life? Yeah. Yeah, it has. It reminds me of the sweet... Okay, just a reminder. Wait, I got to listen to that again. I keep zoning out of your ch chat, guys. Okay, so... Uh, so she is currently 30, right? 33. They've been together 12 years, married 10. She's 33 currently, and he's 54. Did I do the math right? He was 40. I can't do math, guys. What is he, in his 50s, and she's in her 30s right now? Okay, I got to restart that. I keep missing what he's saying. 
Brittany, you're right, but those examples and uh, exemplify value differences, not just interests. Well, true, but hobbies aren't just about interests. Hobbies can also coincide with values. So that's why I meant to say when he said he doesn't care about hobbies, what he really means to say is he doesn't care if the value is inconsequential of values, right? So I was just clarifying for his own language. And you, myself, uh, influence your perspective or view on life. Yeah, yeah, it has. It reminds me of the sweet ignorance of youth. Mm. So there are things to me that are obvious about life mm -hmm. that I can't explain to you. And I can't explain it to you, even though I explain a lot of stuff to you. And mm -hmm. I share with you the advantage of my extra 18 years. Mm -hmm. But there are things that can't be explained. They have to be experienced. Yeah. So there are certain things that I just, <laughs> and I know you're going to get to it. So observing you kind of going through certain things and learning certain things, especially professionally. And I know we're going to get, we're going to talk about the business and stuff, but especially professionally. <laughs> that's the red fucking flag. Fuck. That's, I hate Angie. I hate, I hate, I hate everybody. This is the age gap relationship red flag I see. In all the age gap relationships, I'm telling you, these men are like, oh, it's so cute. Look at my girlfriend figuring out how to be an adult. And I'm like, why are you dating her? Why are you dating her? Like, that's literally the issue I have with all of the men in my life who, not my life, in my, like, in my work and everything. Like, in my, in my bubbles that I keep meeting. I'm trying. I'm trying so hard to find an adult, like, an age gap relationship where the person's in their 20s and the people are older, where there isn't this element to it. Every time, and I don't know if men hear themselves when they talk, but whether it's like people just when they, they always do this. This is always the fucking line I hear out of their mouth. Whether they know it or not, they say things like, Oh, look at her trying to figure it out. Oh, she's so young and naive. And like, she's just, oh, look at her going to the, the club or taking her Instagram photos or getting her business going or figuring out this or driving a car or, oh, it's so cute. And I'm like, Ugh. it's always this line. It's always this line I hear from people that I'm trying so hard to fight my bias. I'm trying so hard to give myself evidence that there isn't this element in the age gap relationship. It's so weird. Why would you want to be in a relationship with someone that you literally look at this way or that you in any way examine them as or exa like why? Like, again, you do you. OK, but this is the line I, I just it makes me feel vomity. And also this is to be fair. This is why I love my dad, because my dad and I have my dad and I are such good friends, but not friends because he's my dad. But like, you know what I mean? We talk about this all the time. Where he was like, why do men date these young girls that are more in, like insecure, that are inexperienced, that are naive, that are children? Why do, what do you have in common? What are you going to talk about? What do you want to talk about that's valuable, right? And it's because of this. My dad is a dad. He doesn't want to raise children. And so many of these men are like raising their partners in a way. And it's so cringe. And it's, I'm sorry, if you need to say out loud like, Oh, you know, it's so cute watching you grow and I'm so excited for you. I can't wait till you figure it out. I'm like. Inappropriate. I just think it's inappropriate. OK, you're not a bad person. You're not like a predator. He's obviously not a predator, but he's obviously really getting an ego boost, which a lot of the men I know do. Again, when I say I know, I just mean like this podcasts, books, friendships, like relatives, like work. Okay, it's like uh, I'm waiting. Somebody give me the evidence that there isn't an element of my partner is young. My partner is youthful. My partner is naive. It's so sweet to see them grow. Somebody in this relationship dynamic where, again, I don't mind age gap relationships, but it's got to specifically be that they're in their 20s and the guy is much older, like 20 years. OK, <clears throat> because 40 and 20, I'm like, what are we talking about here? Like, what are we talking about? And even now she's in her 30s. And see, he's in his 50s and they're still having the same conversation. Gross. I would be so upset if I looked at my partner or if he, like, he would literally think, like, my partner would feel so disrespected. Why do women tolerate this? Why do women think it's romantic when their men look at them like they're children? Why do, like, don't women, aren't they, anno like, this would be so offensive to me if my partner was like, you're so sweet. I can't wait till you're, like, an adult. <laughs> 
<laughs> what is happening? Uh, I'm so sorry. I really want to try to get on board. I'm trying so hard, but I just can't. These men talk about their girlfriends with such like dismissal or their wives, whether they admit it or not or know they're saying it, you know. I do like their transparency. Nero says, I mean, it's good that he's honest, but I think not the best basis of a relationship. Look, I like that they talk about it, but it's still such a red flag. It's like, oh my God, this is so toxic, dudes. But also you do you. Yeah, the teacher-student relationship. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I don't know. There's just like, I, I could not. I just, ugh. Maria says, quote, I love how far along you make me feel. It's so validating. You make me feel like Buddha and that's hot. I, I swear it's an ego thing, right? Ugh, so unattractive. It's just like gross. Stephanie said, so it's like watching a child, a little stupid puppy wandering around the world. What a gem. Literally, literally. It's like, what? Why? You know, Ugh, so weird. Because their primary value to beauty uh, or is their beauty to these men? Yeah, I think it, honestly, I swear. And even the men, oh my God. Like the way they talk about their partners, like again, it it depends. Everyone does it differently. It's like always about how young and beautiful they are. There's always that part of it. And again, like maybe, maybe I'm just too queer. Maybe I'm just <laughs> around too many demisexuals or something. But like, what does it matter? Like, what does it matter if they're like beautiful? Like you're in love with your partner. Like if when I, I didn't go to my mom and say, my partner's so fucking hot, bro. <laughs> He's so fuckable. And that's why I'm dating him. I was like, what? I'm in love. Who cares what he looks like? Like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, you know what I'm saying? But these men and these age gap relationships, they always mention how hot their girlfriends are or they're young. They're young. Like they always mention. Why? Ew. Ew. <clears throat> I just, I can't. Oh my God. I like literally hurt my throat. <clears> throat> Ugh, gross. Freedom says it's narcissism. You talk about how much you look up to them, y'all. And when you grow out of it, it's like saying it's doomed, but it's gloomed for sure. That's the question. That's why I always ask the question is if you're in a relationship where your partner is looking up to you, what happens when she grows up? What happens after she gets healthy? What happens after she doesn't depend on you anymore? What happens to the relationship? You know? Mariah says, Brittany, do you think she was biting her tongue or do you think it went over her head? Well, let's keep listening to find out. But I think a part of her, like a lot of the women I know who end up in these relationships, they are really broken and they need a lot of fucking help. And they usually feel really stable and really loved. And eventually they usually grow out of it and get divorced. So that's the that's the tra that's the trajectory trajectory I always end up seeing, especially since he's like encouraging her to have a job and be independent unless she 100% agrees with him in terms of those values like she probably will leave him and I don't know this couple and I wish them the absolute best but unless she 1000% agrees agrees with this mentality she would leave but or she would stay and be miserable or honestly like you know, like she could believe it too and agree. And then it won't be a problem because they agree on stuff. Ren with the super or with the um, membership uh, member for four months. Thank you so much. Let's go. Did you ever get a chance to watch the Julia Slegg video on her age gap marriage being in turmoil? I haven't. Should we watch that later? If I have time tonight, we'll watch it or we can watch it later this week or I can watch it on my own. But I haven't watched it yet. Maybe we should watch it on stream, though, since it kind of overlaps, you know? Okay, let's keep going. I'm trying to be open-minded, okay? I just, like, they always end up saying the things that make me go, oh, there it is. That's the red, f that's the thing. And maybe it was just my bubble because I was raised in a bubble that wasn't the biggest fan of 20-year age gaps. Like, 10 years, 5 to 10 years, we could all understand to some extent, depending how young the younger person is. But 20? Like, what are you doing? What are we doing, you know? But again, everyone's different. Everyone's different, you know? <clears throat> And by the way, there was this um, one couple I know. They were a really good couple. They're really lovely. And they have a 14-year age gap. And I really like their relationship. Um, and I think they got together when she was 26. I have to ask my mom because she knows them. They're a family friend. They're really lovely. They have a great group of kids, Catholic, very religious, and I also wonder how much the religion matters, if I'm going to be honest with you. But they have a really great relationship. It's really healthy and lovely. But 
I also wonder how much religion coincides with this. Um, and remember that if, she, you know, there are disadvantages, obviously, to the age gap, right? Other than the, this. So this is the emotionally stunted, like, red flag that I see where I'm like, oh, this feels toxic. But then there's the just, like, uh, the other things, like, not exactly bonding on things or having, like, confusion moments, which is, like, you can get over those. Um, I'll ask my mom. That that might be the only age gap relationship that I can reference. But see, I want to disqualify them because they're religious because that does add a certain element. It adds a very specific element to the mix. You know what I mean? Specific cultures and religions that have age gap relationships, they're not always getting married in exactly the same or for the same, like it's a different kind of game they're playing. So I don't know. I'd have to ask my mom more about their relationship and see. I think she was 26 when they got married. 26. Is that right? Anyways. Personally, I know that as much as I I feel like I provide you with a lot of shortcuts and a lot of knowledge to help you along, I, I think that my guidance has certainly accelerated your growth as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that I know there's no point. Right. And and I, I would get, in the past, I would get more and more upset about it. I'm less upset about it now because I know you just need to go through it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think that's what it is. I think observing your development it, yeah, it just kind of reminds me of myself also when I was younger and the fact that I had to go through certain things. Cringe, 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 cringe. I remember when I was your age. Why do you all want to date your dad, bro? I love the term ignorant. That's what it is. This is so much of what I hear from my parents. I don't want any of the conversations I had with my parents to be conversations I have with my lovers. I remember when I was your age. Oh, yeah, you have to go through it. You're doing great. It's like... Don't you feel like you're taking advantage of people? Like, or don't you feel like you're being someone's parent? Like, because I feel like I'm trying to hold on to it a little bit longer. I think before I used to look at it as something negative. Wait, it being what? Certain things. I love the term ignorance because I feel like I'm trying to hold on to it a little bit longer. Uh oh. She's trying to hold ignorance onto it longer. Why? Because the more she knows, the more she realizes she's in a weird age gap relationship. I think before I used to look at it as something negative, like I should know these things and I should, you no. know, understand this and I should. And now I actually, in a way, like you're enjoying watching it. I'm enjoying experience it. I'm like enjoying the humbling experience of making the mistake and then learning from it and just kind of going that, you know, like take life stage by stage. Because I feel like for a long time I tried to rush. Mm. And maybe because I was with you, maybe yeah. because... You're trying to catch up? Yeah, maybe because I'm like, oh, I want to make sure that, you know, we're kind of on the same level. And I think that something shifted for me. See? we w I want to be on the same page as my partner. Like that's important to me that my partner and I are on the same page. Or that we're within a sphere of like what's reasonable. Like it's okay if we're like this. You know, oh, he's here, I'm here, he's here, I'm here, he's here, he's... As long as we're both climbing at the same rate. But if it's like this, bro, actually in my past relationships, that's what's kind of broke me up with my relationships is we were like this and then I would go like this and I'm like, come on, let's go. And like there, there was never like, they were never on the same page again. And I was like, oh my God, what happened? And it's like you outgrow your partner. But when he says like mentally there's no difference between me and you, but then says like, oh, there are things you still have to learn. It's like, hello? Magic Dragon says I'm having this debate right now, but what do you think about seeking advice from friends on stuff with your partner? Does that bother that bothers you and arguments you all have is healthy or should it be limited? So one thing I do different in my relationship that I did, didn't do before is um, I do not – talk about my relationship to people uh if there's any problems in this marriage we will talk to a priest or somebody who is completely third party we will not talk to our parents and we will not talk to anybody who might internalize that information in a way that would not be reasonable so a therapist would be great a priest would be great if we trusted them um, but that's the one thing that I changed versus in my past relationships. I would tell my friends and family everything. And I knew I think it was a cry for help in the past 
where I knew I wasn't in good relationships. And I think honestly, every time I complained about my relationships to people or sought help, I was also like telling some like asking for permission to almost like break up, which they gave me a lot. My friends and family hated my my people who I dated and they hated them. But it wasn't like I was like a little girl in love, you know, type thing. Um, In this marriage, though, because this is my first time being married, obviously, my only time being married, we made a commitment that it would be considered infidelity if we went to people about our relationship in an intimate manner. If there are problems in this marriage, we will fix them or we will talk to a therapist or a priest that we trust. Um, A priest because I have a family priest that I really like and he's really like a good third party person to go to. But also we could go to a therapist like we don't need to to go to our family and friends who have their own biases and prejudices and all these things. But also like it's my marriage and it's none of your business. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, But if we need help with fun stuff or good advice about random like marriage stuff, like absolutely we'll go to our parents but if there's if there's ever a real issue in this marriage, like a a big one where we need a part a person, we'll go to a therapist. It just feels more responsible, I think, than in the past, you know, because look, I have family and friends. I have people who come to me. They'll tell me the problems in their relationships. And they'll be like, why don't you like my relationship? I'm like, bro, the the, you, the what you have told me, 90% of it is all bad stuff. You only come to me when your relationship sucks. Like people don't know how to tell the good things about their relationships. Like sometimes people don't know how to tell you life is good, but they don't understand. Like every time you talk to people, you don't have to tell them your problems. You can just be like, everything is great. Everything is great. Everything is great. If you hear from someone that everything is great, then when they share something is bad, it's like shocking because it's so out of the norm. But if you have a relationship where everything is bad every time you talk to your friends, but then you have one good day, who cares about that good day, bro? When 90% of it is bad. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so sometimes I think people f- don't understand like what you tell people is what they know about your relationship, right? So I make it an effort to make sure people know like everything is fine because it is. But also if anything was bad, that means we need to go to somebody who's a professional, right? And we need to like talk to them about it because some we're not able to figure it out ourselves. But honestly, like My partner and I are so good about boundaries and values. I hope we don't have one of those problems. But if and when we do, we'll go to a therapist or, like I said, my family priest. Um, But yeah, mm -mm. Mm -mm. like if it's big enough, you know what I mean? Now, don't get me wrong. If you find yourself in an abusive situation and you're afraid to tell any of your friends and family, that's probably not a good sign. If I'm in an abusive situation, I will not be afraid to tell my family. This isn't about abuse. We're not talking about abuse. If you are being abused, if there's infidelity, if you're being hit, if you're being like abused in some way, you should reach out to somebody to help you. Okay. But if you're just having like a disagreement or a miscommunication, like you guys can solve that on your own or get a third party. Trust. I would say maybe this year where I was like, wait, no, no, no. This year? Yeah, because I, I, yeah, I was trying. Like something that I love about our age gap is because you have more experience, because you have more knowledge and wisdom, which actually I don't know if it's because of the age gap. Like I think you're just a very wise person in general, and that's yeah. what attracted me to you. Okay. I was trying to make sure that, you know, I can provide the same value as you um, in certain like aspects. I understand what you're saying, but, I, you know, I want to say something that, I don't want to kind of, I'm not trying to put myself down by saying it. It's just, I feel it's just a fact. Mm. Your capacity to learn is, is better than mine. Like you're a faster learner than me. Mm -hmm. Your capacity to take in knowledge, process it and apply it. You're just faster at it than I am. Mm -hmm. So just because I've been around longer, that doesn't make (laughs) me better at figuring things out. So at this point, I'm better at you than figuring things out, Mm -hmm. but it's not because I'm able to process information better than you. Like whatever, whatever we're working on, it's already happened to me 17 times. So I can take the information, I can, I remember the information from actually doing stuff Mm -hmm. and apply it to a current situation. Whereas you can take new information and process it much quicker than I can. I don't know why you just are. And you just have a natural skill. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say I'm probably above average in Mm -hmm. terms of my ability to like process in information and then come up with like and, and solve problems with that information but you're like way above average you're exponentially above average and i and i feel that's why you're successful in what you do because i i and i, and I, and I recognize that in you mm-hmm. and by the way i didn't see that in you when i proposed right mm, i don't know about that i will say um hold on uh for the record who was it is it the freak who is it uh, 
by the way, I'm not saying this like because your friends are going to come get at you or your friends are like your friends should not be people who are looking for reasons to like hate on you or your relationship. That's not what I'm saying for clarification, because I made it. I think the conversation in the chat almost made it sound like that. Like my friends are great people and they're wonderful, but they're people and they're separate from my relationship. What I'm trying to say is like you're not in my relationship, so I don't need you in it. My partner and I are on a team. I don't need you in it. Think about it like this. You have a football team. Do you go to the other teams and ask them to run plays with you? No, you're not on our team. You're not going to run plays with us. Like my partner and I are in a team. We're the only people on this team. We're not running plays with you. When you go to a therapist, you're not running plays with your therapist. You're like, you're doing something different. When you go to a counselor, you're doing something in a professional capacity that's not involved. They're not in your relationship. So like my friends and family are amazing. I'm not trying to keep things away from my family and friends. I'm trying to remind them that like you're not in my marriage because human beings are beautiful. And like I said earlier with the drama speech, right? People have a tendency to think, oh, because you've let me in on this, now I'm a part of the team. You're not a part of the fucking team. I am not living a life with you. You're not on this fucking team. So I never want to give people a reason to think you're on the fucking team. You're not on the fucking team. Okay. Ooh, a counselor could basically be like a coach. Yeah. So if we're going with the, like the team analogy, okay. It's like, you're not on the fucking team. You don't need to. Okay. The therapist is like going to a coach or something. He's not a player. They're not players on the team. They're just like a nut. Okay. So sometimes I think friends and family mean the best. But the moment they think they're allowed to have opinions about your relationship or your jobs or anything, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, just a reminder, like I'm an adult and I know what the fuck I'm doing and you're not on this team. Like I'm on the team and my husband's on the team or like this is my business. Like you're not a part of the business, you know, because again, it's nice to go to family and friends, but humans, for some reason, I've they just have this capacity. They just have this tendency to think they're on the fucking team. You're not on the fucking team. So I didn't I didn't know that you're a genius. But you are. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, correct. I wanted to touch on the ignorance. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I guess we, both of us, we get reached out by quite a few people that are in relationship with an age gap asking for advice or asking for any kind of things to look out for. Do you ever answer those? Yeah. Like with, yeah, what do I you try say? To, I try to answer as much as I can, time permitting, but... What do I say? I think the first thing, and I think like kind of like as a like a foundational element mm. to this is that you absolutely have to not care what people think. So I think the stress that people have from being in a relationship that have like an age gap, but any relationship that's uncommon, mm. it could be an interracial relationship, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, different ethnicities, different whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, Cultures, yeah. Culture, political opinions, Religions, whatever. Religions, There's, a, there's yeah. a million different things. Regardless of what it is, the thing is, is that if you're happy in that relationship, that's your relationship. And a relationship really does come down to the two people that are in it. Mm -hmm. And so my advice to people when they talk about an age gap, and actually people have reached out to me also about like ethnicity differences and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And my first thing that I say to them as like a foundational element is you, you first, the first thing you need to do is not care what other people think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I believe, I firmly believe that in the relationship that you're in and regardless of what the differences are if you stop caring what other people think you're gonna you're gonna basically eliminate 95 percent of the problem of that exists with that relationship right so that's it 95 percent of it so obviously <laughs> within reason i do think this is probably more correct than incorrect and i would say kind of same actually colleen you said it really well my friends and family don't even share my values i don't need their opinion on my relationship so like Literally, I think one of the greatest examples that I use is the fact that my partner and I are pretty like we're very progressive, like in a lot of ways, maybe not politically, like in the American sense, but in the like social uh, social way of thinking about things, I guess you could say we're pretty progressive. And I don't need other people in my business being like, oh, like you really shouldn't be on OnlyFans if you're married. It's like, bro, I'm going to walk around Seattle naked if I want. OK, <clears throat> like my husband knows who he married. OK. And I'm not ashamed of the way that I'm pro nudity, the way that I like, I'm not ashamed of those things. He married a very sex positive person, but that's like kind of abnormal to a lot of people. Like not everyone's wife is on OF. Um, not everyone's wife is like pro, like, you know, dance in a festival for Seattle naked. Like not everyone's done that. 
Now, my partner's been with me only recently, so he has so also hasn't seen me dance in a festival. But he's you know he knows he knows I'm on OF, right? And I think that it would be weird to go to somebody else who I knew know is against it to be like, um, what do you think about this part of my marriage? Like, obviously, they're all going to be against it. I think instead I would say that the, again, the only time you should talk to people about your relationship is, you know, politely, you know, how's everything? Great. How's everything with you? Or if you're like, we want to hang our frame in the house this way. Do you guys think we should do it here or here? Because like, what's the best way to hang a frame on the wall? Like talk to people about your relationship, but like about personal stuff. There's like a line of valid, like validation seeking that I think is like inappropriate. Or even the fact that like my in-laws are really respectful, right? Even like, cause they're so respectful of our space. My mom and my dad are so respectful of our space. Like we don't, you know, there's just something respectful about it that I think comes from everyone being very independent. His parents don't want me in his marriage. My mom and dad don't want me in theirs. What are they going to, they wouldn't be in ours. You know what I mean? They don't want to be in ours. It's like just about respect. Like I respect you. Enjoy your marriage. We trust you. As long as everything's great, we love you. If God forbid anything evil is happening, our parents would want to know and we'd want to tell them. But since everything is great, we can handle minor indifferences or miscommunications or whatever might happen. The world doesn't need to know those things, right? And I think he's right that you need to stop seeking approval of other people because you have enough confidence to like guide your own ship. Your marriage is like a ship and you have to have the confidence to guide it. And if you don't, great. There are church counselors. There are secular counselors. There are books on marriage. There are wise people you can learn from that you can be like you can learn from people who have been successfully married. But seeking validation is different right? Seeking validation is different. So I, I agree with him in this front, you know? Yaya says you make Seattle sound like a wild ass place. I mean, it is wild. When I was in Seattle a billion years ago, it was a wild place, okay? Just stopping to care what other people think. Mm -hmm. The fact that I don't care at all what other people think, or the fact that I'm older than you at all, all of those nasty comments on social media, mm -hmm. they don't even... Yes, yes. But maybe you should care. <laughs> Maybe you should care that you're older than her. Maybe you should care that you look at her like she's a child. Or maybe you should care. But then, you know, maybe that's just their vibe. At the end of the day, they're allowed to have this dynamic. My question again is what's going to happen when she feels like she's caught up to him? Because right now they're already saying they're not on the same page. He's much older and wiser and she's still a kid who's figuring it out. Gross. But okay. What happens when she's not a kid anymore? That's the question. They seem like they have a lovely family. They seem like they have a lovely relationship in a lot of ways. But this is the only issue I have with them is like, how do you guys maintain these relationships? Like, I would feel so just not seen, I guess, in a lot of ways. But I guess like if you feel seen in the relationship, that's fine. You know what I mean? If you feel seen, I guess it's always fine. But he did say it was pissing him off originally. That she was young and still figuring stuff out. And then he had to let it go. See, I don't like that. Not when it comes to a partner. I'm too much of like partners should be equal. So that's just my bubble, I guess, right? Like nothing here is abusive, right? It's just like a little weird. Like why would you have to like, can you imagine going into partnership with somebody? Would you go into business with somebody and be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm putting, uh, I'm going into business with somebody who's like, I guess maybe you could though. Maybe there's just a bubble of people that could go into business with people that are like young and naive and could fuck everything up because they're like, I have faith in you to figure it out. But then what if they don't? And is she afraid to fuck up? Does she get to fuck up like a normal 20 year old? If she was 20 when they got together, did she ever get to actually fuck up in a different way? You know what I mean? I just, I don't know. Stephanie says he will continue to belittle and treat her like a child to quote, put her in her place. I imagine in his... Uh, mind she will never be on his level. That's what I think ends up happening. And then the men, there's the other variation of man. I, I named them the other day in my like different kinds of men in age gap relationships is the other kind who sort of like dads them in a different way, like a sweeter dad way, which is like, oh my God, she's so great. Look at the way she's like growing up. Like she's amazing. She's independent. She's fierce. Um, I love watching her grow. I love watching being a guide. I'm so glad I can mentor them. It's like, they ultimately still think they're doing something like 
wise like you know what I mean? there's it's almost like you're saying the same thing it's you know what i mean it just feels so weird phase me <clears throat> at all i think because we just we just have something so unique and so special like i really feel like this marriage was meant to be you know ah, what i mean okay I so she feels like they're soulmates i, I just think i think i think we just tra it's trend look the correct relationship yeah. transcends age and everything else yeah however from a practice does that also would he say that if she was 12 like we <clears throat> we had this conversation on my age gap panel i did with wick where not mine but his panel i we did with wick where we talked about this again we always say like age is just a number but we don't really mean that we don't really mean that so why is it that we're okay with this happening like again 18 is the legal age and i accept we had to put some number somewhere but I still don't think it's okay for 18-year-olds to be with 40-year-olds. I think it's legally okay. And I think it's weird that we need the law to tell you that. But like in Italy, 14 is the age of consent. So, hello? Are we just like, you know, just because 18 is the age of consent, which I think is fine. I still don't know if it's right for them to be engaging in the behavior anyways. Do you get what I'm saying? Like I'm, if you want Britney's, here's another, another, again, I'm not saying you're a bad person. But if you want Britney's honest opinion, I will think less of you if you are dating somebody who's 18, who six months ago would have been illegal to date and you're way older. I don't like that. You know what I mean? And I think it's a red flag. And I usually tell my friends, family, whoever, love you so much. But if you're doing this, you're crazy. Like you're insane, right? So is age just a number? Ah, Leah, great point. Age is just a number after 25. That's my personal rule. Ooh, I think I can get on board with that. I would say age is just a number definitely after 30 and probably after 25. Yeah. Okay. That's, I could see that. Actually, I think I'm okay with that. Age is just a number after 25, but mostly, especially after 30. So emotionally, I would say ex especially after 30, age is just a number. 20 to 25 to 30 Age is becoming just a number. But for me, I think 30 is actually my line, if I'm going to be really frank. I think after 30, I don't care. I don't care how old they are. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care about anything. But before 30, I'm pretty lenient on people right now. You know? Um, Hey, Zuki, super weird message, bro. Um, And I think because of it, you're just, you're going to get a timeout. <laughs> And if you make comments like that more, I don't know, bro, the vibes are off. The vibes are off. It's not the vibes. You know, it's just like a little too hetero in here, you know, feeling suffocated by the heterosexuality. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ethical perspective. There are limits. Yeah. Right? So when I hear about people with like a 35 year age difference. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's just going to be problematic. Mm -hmm. I feel there, there are negatives even to our age difference. What's problematic? Mm -hmm. However, from a practical perspective, there are limits, yeah. right? So when I hear about people with like a 35-year age difference, yeah, yeah, like that's just going to be problematic. Mm -hmm. I feel there, there are negatives even to our age difference. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So he has a line. Okay, we all have our own personal lines. So he doesn't like age gaps of 35 years. Yeah? Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I think <laughs> you guys wanting to know what the comment said. OK, the comment was so cringe. Don't make comments like this, guys. The comment said, if you if me and you were married, you wouldn't be walking around naked in front of nobody. That's because I would look you in the eyes and talk to you and tell you what to not to do and what to do. <laughs> He's obviously trolling. But like the troll was too weird. Don't put comments. Don't make comments about telling me what to do. I'll automatically block you, bitch. Um. Ren says, do you think your 30s is your line because that's when you personally started to understand the world better? Um, partially. And it seems to be the normal now. Right? It seems to be normal now from most of the people that I know, even the ones that are in great marriages in their 20s, they they even said when I they turned 30, everything changed. So in my bubble, 30 seems to be the number. My parents said that to me. My mom said that to me. She goes, when 30 hits, your whole life will change. And she was right. Right? She was totally right. Um, my siblings that are in their 20s, once they turn 30, I see a shift in them. My friends, 30 is like a huge shift. I don't know what it is. So I think it's just my bubble. 
where 30 changes so much. So I feel like it, that could make sense of why I feel that comfortable. Plus 30 in American years, like that's a big deal. 30 feels grown. 28, 28 still feels really young to me somehow. Something about 30 and in culture, 30 is a big deal. Remember that in a large part of American culture, 30 means you're an adult now. 30 means you're old. So I think even culturally, it's still that way. So many women I still see on TikTok are scared of turning 30. I think for a lot of people, 30 is a very big deal. And studies show that most most men don't even feel like men in America until about 35, according to the, the studies that I saw years ago. So people are definitely having relationships or something about your 30s is like, now I'm not even close to high school. Now I'm very far from that. Now I'm heading into middle age. Something about 30 is huge. You know, I don't know what it is, you know, but it is huge. Smith just turned 30 a couple days ago. Smith is 30? Are you sure? Smith is 30. Why did I think he was so much younger? I mean, he could be 30. We're going to see big changes. Do you only feel that shift in others after you yourself have turned 30? Oh, so I think I just answered that, right? 30, I had a huge mental awakening, took time to reflect externally. Well, I think there's a lot more happening biologically than we might realize too. Um, and 30, there's something about it. Like culturally, it seems to be a big deal. Um, for other people, 30 is also over the hill. Once you're 30, you're undateable. Like you're an old lady. So maybe there is something about it. I don't know. You know? It is interesting. Ah, oh, Brittany, I don't know how you feel about astrology, but a person's first Saturn in re returns happens with 27 and 30, hence 30 being the adult rite of passage. Ah, interesting. I don't know much about it, but I love it. And I will say again, like age gaps, like I can see the differences between people in their late 20s and people in their 30s. I can see it, but it's still much closer in compatibility than someone in their early 20s. Now, even early 20s and mid 20s, much more compatibility, but still a little bit of a strain, still possible to grow and meet each other. Same with like, if you're in your late 30s, like um, and you're dating like someone in their early, th no, sorry, late 20s and early 30s, there is a little bit of a gap I see but then it like it fixes itself. Like my brother and his wife, she's in her late twenties and he's in his thirties. But they're just and they're just a little bit. It's just like a little bit of a gap, almost like perfectly representing their age difference. It is like a little bit of a gap. But then they're slowly like this. It's it's gonna happen, and it's interesting as I watch them grow. And they're just like a little bit. They're technically a little bit, but they're on the same page. They're just on different paragraphs. Ooh, that's what it is. They're on the same page. They're just on different paragraphs of the page and they're so close. Like they're about to sync up even better in their marriage. I can see it coming versus my parents are like a year apart and they really recommended that. My parents always recommended dating within five years um, or 10 years at the most, at the most. And I kind of vibe with that, you know, but they even recommend my parents are like date somebody as close to your age as possible. So you can just have like a very similar life together, you know, the more you go. The but more I, the problem is going to be. I didn't, I didn't think, like I didn't take. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, PB. You're not talking about, you can't be talking about what I'm talking about. There's definitely a bubble once I left high school where I felt old as crap, but maybe it's because I was working. We were all working, girl. I've been working since I was 11. We all worked. We all had jobs. Like, it's not that. Because I know some bubbles where you're 30 and you're working, but like you're still kind of like a teenager to me. So... There's like an adult, adult, adult feeling. Look, I've always felt like an adult and I've always felt like a kid, but there's like a real adulting that happens and it doesn't always happen at 30. There are a lot of 30 year olds I see that haven't hit it yet. So I think some, maybe it's some 30 year olds, something about 30. And if you're ready for it, you like shift, something shifts in you that should be different unless you're stagnant because I've been working my whole life too, but I know there was a huge difference. I know at 30, and again, maybe because my mom told me it would change, it did. Maybe it is. Interesting. I wonder what it is. Yeah, because even my brothers, like, as they turn 30, I'm like, something's different. Like, something shifted with them. Maybe it's a bubble. It could just be a bubble thing. You know what I mean? Because everyone's like an adult. Because we all have to be, but no one's like an adult. There's something. Something. I don't know. Colleen says my husband is a little younger, but he's always been a little bit more mature than me. He had a way harder upbringing, though. Good point. Good point. 
And says, I don't know how much of it is biological. It definitely feels like the Americans, maybe Westerners broadly, infantilize their 20-something-year-olds a lot more than other folks do, for sure. Oh, for sure. That's a big part of it, you know? Oh, maybe it's even looks. Like, have you guys seen somebody in their 20s and you're like, why do you look like that? And then you see someone in your 30s and they're like, oh, there it is. There, you even look different. Like, you know, I don't know. I've been looking at young people lately and I'm like, you look so young. And then when they turn 30, I'm like, oh, there it is. Which is why the Botox is throwing me off. That Botox phenomenon is throwing my brain off because there's like a look people have when they naturally turn older that younger people are starting to have that I'm like confused by, you know? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Nero says maybe it's the shift that at some point you have your needs met more or less on the hunt to find something and become more settled. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, Justin, good point. Says as far as I'm aware, true adulthood is a myth. All I've seen is high school all the way down, but everyone pretends that they're above it. Um, okay. That is, everything is always high school with money, no matter how old you are. That is true. Like true. Um, but like, you're still like an adult, like there's still an oldness to you. That's clear that I think people have or don't have, but I think you're right that it probably is more of a myth or more so contextual. So maybe the thing we're even talking about happens in different cultures at different ages, but it's like a specific shift. Maybe it's like more of a transformation than an age thing. Ooh, let's do that. More nuanced. Less of an age thing, more of a nuanced of energy. Like when you shift energy. Oh, the energy shift. Like there it is. There's the there's that shift. Maybe it's like that. Like a one, two, three, four shift. Well, not my number system, but a different, like a, I'm trying to put a name to it. You're right, Justin. Maybe it's more of a a mythos around a conception around or a, something about transformation. Anyways. To consideration, those realistic, practical things when we got married. Because you, you, know? were, you were 20. You didn't, yeah, I was yeah, 20. Plus. Even now, I feel like you talk about mortality way more than I do. And... <laughs> See, I that relationship. You were twenty. You were twenty. It's like ugh. you, that's especially one of those, since you turned fifty. That's one of those things that I can't explain to you that you're gonna have to live and figure it out on your own. Because yeah. when you're gonna be this age, mm -hmm. you're also gonna be thinking about it, and it's less. Red flags everywhere. Red flags everywhere. Mortality. You know what it is? It's mortality and succession. So mm -hmm. I need to make sure that you and the kids are okay. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's on the front of my mind at all times. You also start, when you get older, you also start thinking like, you start taking inventory of your life. Like, wh what haven't I done yet? Or mm -hmm. what should I have done? Or am I not successful enough at a certain, you know, these certain aspects of life? And so, it, you know, you don't have that yet. Yeah. And there's no way a 32-year-old would. I certainly didn't. The yeah. world was my oyster at 32. I was like, you know, I didn't think of these things. That's but crazy. Because like, see, I'm having a different lived experience, I suppose. Like, what things is he talking about exactly? Maybe my partner and I are just old souls and we're thinking, but like how, like, I don't understand this. It's not about age at that point. It's about responsibility, right? Isn't it about like... Isn't it about, Bryson, you're so sweet. Thank you. Single out when we're going to write a red flag single. Yeah. Like we, like, what does that mean? It's just about being responsible for people. Like you should be thinking about that. If you're like, is he saying she isn't, what did I, what, did I miss something? What? But you have to start, th you, you, not that you have to, you naturally will start thinking of these. And I think that's a big divide when we talk about the differences in our age from a He's just making an age argument uh, when it's about uh, introspection. Yeah. Like what is, what is. Uh, 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 what? A, a mentality perspective. That's, I think, one of the really big... How long did they date before they got married? They dated two years, married <clears throat> 10. Differences. Yeah, I think the urgency that you have, right. I don't feel yet. Especially in the business. Yeah. But with the business, it's not only because of my age, mm. but it's also because of my experience in business. Um, But isn't it also because he's worth $40 million and she wasn't? I'm sorry, was she rich when they met? Is she not worried about money because you decided not to have her worried about it? I don't understand this relationship at all. Is he the provider or are they equals in the relationship? Then why would you as a successful businessman marry somebody who's just starting out? Like what? See, that feels weird. Or like they're not on the same. See, they're not on the same page. I could not. 
<clears throat> all those years before I met you, mm -hmm. that I understand the urgency of business because I had made a mistake of being comfortable in one of my early businesses that we were making, you know, decent money with, we were making good money with, and I got comfortable and I should have been progressing. And I probably lost eight years of hard, like, pro of progress yeah. because I got comfortable because I didn't know. <clears throat> yeah. And so I'm always rushing you. Uh, so there's an element of fear here that's fair. That's interesting. <sighs> no, Yaya says, okay, he was probably waiting for her to turn 18. No, 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 no. Didn't they meet at 20 and marry at 22? Right? I think they met at 20. Dated for two years, then got married. They didn't date at 18, right? No, they were 20 when... No, wait. Yeah, because she's 33 now and they've been married for 10 years and together for two. No, together for 13. No, I can't do math. Together for 12? Now I'm confused. Was she only eight? No. Mm. I'm losing the math here. Anyways, this this would be so hard for me to do. Like this would be, see, I can't do, I can't do the whole like, oh, she's learning and she'll figure it out. Like, you're my partner. Get on the same fucking page. I need a teammate, not a child to take care of. See, why do men want to raise their wives? <laughs> you, because I... But men and women have this problem. Women will date boys and be their mothers, and men will be girls' fathers, and I think both relationships are toxic. Thank you. No, you're going to come to the same conclusion when you get to where I am. Yeah. And you're going to... And I don't want you to look back and say... Ah, he said when we got married when you were 20. Wait, good point. It's crazy to think she is your age, Brittany. She seems way younger. She does seem way younger, but I would too if some guy swept me up at 20 and gave me my whole life. I had a hard life. I had to be independent and live my life. Life raised me. She looks pampered as fuck. And she was if he swooped her up at 20 and he had lots of money at 20. You know what I mean? And I or or at 38, I don't know how rich he or wealthy he was then. But like, yeah, she that's what I'm saying. Like, I had to live my life. I had to be independent. I had to have my own apartment and pay my own bills. Hello? Like, of course, she looks young, like in genetics, obviously, and, you know, aesthetic. And obvi obviously, she like looks very pretty. She looks like she does stuff and everything, which is good. She's very pretty. Um, but her genetics are also different. Right. But Hello. I should have done more. That's why I push you so hard in business. See how he has to push her because he took her away from life? That's what I'm saying. Life would have pushed her. But now life can't push her. Her husband has to. You know? Do you know what I'm saying? Hello? Like he pushes her hard and goes, why aren't you growing up? Well, because, sir, you're being her father. What do you mean? I know. I, I actually, I value that a lot. And What I is he it. lecturing her right now? Are we watching a dad lecture his daughter? And I love hearing your introspections about your own journey and your own experience I'll, some of them i may not understand because just from sheer experience and, and, and age and some of them you may not agree read a book didn't he say she likes to read books see this is so weird dude with and that's fine yeah, too. And she needs to call me let's do some calls together girly i like you already we can be best friends i i could ask her some fucking questions let me tell you i may not agree with i agree but and now if she's not introspection introspective how does he know they share values if she isn't caught up to him, if they're not on the same page, I don't know. They're being too vague for me. I can't tell what they're talking about. Like, how, do, how does he know, like, she's not going to grow into somebody who's going to divorce him? You know what I mean? Hello? I think it gives me such a different perspective on life. My growth in certain areas, the one that I decide to accelerate my growth in, are obviously, like, those areas benefiting mm -hmm. from that a lot. Okay, so speaking of the business, because we... I actually think they might both get their foreheads done because neither of their foreheads have moved, right? His has a little bit of a line. A lot of bald guys have been doing it, actually. It's kind of interesting. It's nice. Izzy did it from Love is Blind. He got his, like, forehead done. We do work together. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, the dynamic of married couples also working together and building something is a complex one at times. True. My partner and I aren't going into business together as far as we know, because it would complicate things in a way that's specific. My mom and da dad, my dad runs a business and my mom helps him with the business, but it's not my mom's business, if that makes sense, because it's my dad's baby and she just does everything 
that she can to help it grow because like they're a team, but it's not her company in a way, though she helped it grow for sure. But it's one of those things where it's different than couples who do things together. You know, monkey do D Trevi. Hey, Brittany content has been fired lately. Oh my God. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much. I need positive reinforcement. It helps. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, ah, seven with the T in the comments. Their company is Valeria Inc. Ah, glass store on red flags on sale. Okay. Love that. It's essential to know that Valeria 1990, despite being new influencer, 2017, 2018, it was heavily dependent on her on her husband's ill-gotten wealth from the beginning of their relationship at a young age of 19. Valeria has been associated with Gary, uh, Gary's deceitful practices and is complicit in profiting in other people's misery. Whoa, where'd you get this tea from? Seven, what website are you sourcing this from? Ooh, is there some tea with this, um, these people? So we've been working together now for how long? Seven, Seven years. years? In a business capacity. I mean, we were working together from the day we met. We, were, we, we worked to get married. We worked on our life. We, we worked on decorating. We worked on everything together. Yeah. But how do, let's actually rewind a little bit and talk about how we got into business together. Because when I started with social media, I didn't start it from a place of like, oh, this is a business. And with your experience, um, you actually came one time to me and you're like, hey, what are you doing? You know, you saw that I was kind of doing YouTube a little bit here and there. I filming. saw money came in. Come on. You we saw, know what happened. Yeah. You saw money came in, but you also saw that I was doing something and you're like, what is this? And when I showed it to you, based on your kind of knowledge of the media industry, of the internet biz business, you're like, this is this is something. This is big. So let's back up for a second. Mm. I want to I back up for a second. And I've told you this a lot of times, so this isn't going to be a surprise to you. When you and I got married, it's from the day we met, yeah. And I decided you're going to be my wife. Uh, it never crossed my mind what you would do. I decided you were going to be my wife. Professionally. It didn't cross my mind. I never thought about it. You know what I mean? So yeah. to me, it's just like I always thought as a man and as a traditional man, I'm going to work and you're going to do. I didn't think I'm going to work and you're going to stay at home. I yeah. thought I'm going to work and you're going to do whatever you want. Yeah. That was my intention to give you that life from day one. So to <clears> me... The fact that this happened and I saw it, I spent some time kind of on my own and I thought, okay, <laughs> like now she's going to have to work. Like, am I okay with her working? But then I thought I was like looking around and I saw everything that was going on. What do you mean? Like now she has to work? In social media. And I thought if she's going to do something, this is the thing to do because not only is this like, I think going to be a big hit financially, but this is cool. Like this is cool and fun and interesting mm -hmm. and i imagine this life for you where you're <clears throat> a... okay hold on oh okay so this is his linkedin okay hold on oh my gosh so annoying stop okay this is his linkedin okay i do not want to sign in thank you for asking this is his linkedin and it said Okay, Miami, Florida. Why is everyone in Florida? English and Russian. Okay, hold on. I saw a thing that said he had a medal. Is he an athlete as well? What? Okay, hold on. This website, where was it? So he says professional athlete, Olympic gold medalist, and world champion. But then when I click on it, where is that information? I don't want to view profile. I don't want to join anything. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I'm I'm not seeing as much on him as I thought I should. And so part of me is like, where's the money, George? A huge celebrity. You, I'm glad you don't cringe when I say that anymore. So that's progress. I envision that you're going to be this huge celebrity, super influential, um, helping millions of people. <clears throat> And I'm like, this is it. This is what Valeria was meant to do. And oddly enough, this is what I was meant to do. I was meant to be the support and the catalyst to get it done. Because mm -hmm. it's funny because then I realized my purpose when I saw how talented 
you were at the time and still are, obviously. And I was like, this is my purpose. Mm -hmm. And I had met Kris Jenner about... What was his purpose? To raise her as a good daughter or as a good father? Kris Jenner. Kris Jenner? Maybe a year and a half prior to that. Mm -hmm. So I had met her for some other business dealings. And I was actually in her home twice. And I met... Okay, wow. Cool, bro. With her. And I remember it so vividly. Like, we were in her... You know, we were in the kind of main area of her house. And then we went to her office. And in her office, you know, I was sitting there and her phone kept ringing. You know, she's this whole momager thing. And I saw the photos on the walls. It wasn't photos. It was framed magazine covers of all of her children. So Kim was there and Chloe and all of them. North North ran in. That was cool. When North ran in, I was like, oh, my God. I cannot figure out what these people do. Like, what do they really do, though? I didn't think it's it's North, it's Kanye's daughter. But. But anyways, that's that's a different story. But the point is, is that in meeting with Chris, I saw this business and I was fascinated by it. Mm -hmm. I was fascinated. And you hadn't even, you weren't even doing any social media at that time. But then fast forward, maybe you were. But no, I think I was already, you? yeah. I, I didn't pay, I, it wasn't in my scope of vision. Yeah. Okay, so he made dealfind.com, which I'm on. It's just a normal like search engine kind of. You know, find find your deals right here, buddies. Find it right here. Put it in. Put it in. Put it in. Put it in. So what do I look like? Desk? Do I do that? Visit site. Visit. Oh, this looks like trash. Okay. Um, is this it? This is his website that like has made him a billionaire, millionaire, millionaire. Hmm. Hmm. And then you know whatever it was, like a year later, this happened. And I had that flashback to my time with Chris. And I actually spent some time with Kim mm -hmm. at Chloe's house. And we talked. And I just kind of felt, even though it was brief, but mm -hmm. I, I kind of felt the infrastructure. And I felt mm -hmm. the business side of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when you started making content, that was the genesis of like, okay, this is what she's going to do. This is what Valeria is going to do. This is what she was born to do. Seven, Seven, you have to tell me where you're getting this information because it's like very like slanderous, but I'm not seeing like, where are you getting these reviews? Review says a company run by Valeria, Valeria and her husband Gary should be avoided at all costs. He's known for scammer at old companies, left countless people in financial ruin, then despairing. Snopes even fact check their dubious activities. Where is this? I know you can't put links in the chat. Glass door. Oh, glass door is the name of it. Got it. Do and I got very aggressive in terms of like we have to push this through. We have to push this through. And I was also in between businesses. I had a business that folded, that was shut down right before that. And I was like, it's perfect. This, this is, is fate. Yeah. This was meant to happen. Yeah. Because I had in that business that that uh, <laughs> shut down. Oh. I had what business that shut down? What business that shut down? Gained a lot of knowledge about media in general. Mm -hmm. And like the data behind media and all the KPIs that drive it. And then you did this. And I remembered Chris and Kim. And I was just like, it was, everything it was just came together. together. And I remember I said to you, Valeria, you are going to be the Oprah of your generation. You're going to be a huge star. We're going to push this thing through. This is while we're sitting in like a suburb of Toronto, <laughs> living this suburban life with little kids. And I was just like, no, 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 we're, that's it. You're, you're a star. You're going to be the biggest star ever. <laughs> you truly are the visionary between us. That's for sure. You thought I was crazy. Honestly, I still think you're crazy at times. So she's kind of the star, but she doesn't have enough confidence in herself. So he boosts her up with confidence and basically, I mean, that's great, I guess. I don't get it. There's something weird. But I think that's what works in our dynamic. And um, to touch on your point, first of all, I wanted to mention that I very much appreciate that when we got married, you didn't... In our relationship, it wasn't like, okay, what do you do? How do you contribute? Uh, you know, what do you do for work? Do you Are you going to go back to school? Like, I, I shared with you that I'm kind of like, I don't, you know, I'm interested in this and this and this, but you created this space for me to explore what I liked. And, you know, I actually got to touch different interests of mine, like with the holistic nutrition, with all these different things. When I was doing that, I was like, again, you created a space where I was like, I have the freedom to try these different things sure. and to see see where I'm good at and what I'm yeah I'm super confused so did his business shut down and they were like 
doing poorly and then they were like cuddling and with children like struggling decided she was going to be the money maker i don't which is fine but like is that what happened I'm not so good at and things like that. And that's how I got into social media. So I had the time, I had the luxury to do that. And I really, I really appreciate that. Uh, but once you did recognize that, oh, like you're, you're talented in this, and this is something that will, you know, be a huge thing and you pressed on it, I think, th and we started working together. That's when we had, I think the most kind of, um, how do you say it? Conflict? How do you say this? It's not even conflict, but it was challenging to find the balance of like the business and our family life. It wasn't for me. It wasn't for you because I feel like for you it's all together. But for me, I needed that separation. Yeah, but that's, I feel that that's like a, that's like a nostalgic look at it where, you, oh, we have to separate work from life and blah, 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 blah. It is very to, old school, but at the time, that's not, what I knew. It's not old school. I think it's just an ignorant way to look at it life to me look to me there's one thing <laughs> to me there's one thing right there's one thing yeah the one thing to me is the benefit to the family so to me the benefit to the family is the one thing so that's one thing so oh. he's chris jenner he wants to be chris jenner he literally admires chris jenner gross gross he's like admiring chris jenner he wants to make Money off the family, use everyone as an object, put everyone up for sale, make everything. Yeah, he's Chris. He's literally, Chris, yeah, Chris Jenner. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Second time he's called her ignorant and, you know, okay. Weird vibes, bro. Weird vibes, bro. Well, I'm going to explain it to you. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm going to explain it to you. Okay. I'm going to explain it to you. Right now, you and I just got back from Anguilla. Yeah. Right? And in Anguilla... We actually, we reconnected. We had some time together. We yeah. didn't, the kids weren't with us. We didn't have a lot of kind of work stuff. We actually, we had a, we had a really nice time. So to me, the benefit of that trip in Anguilla was that you and I reconnected and we're happier. Because we're happier, the kids are happier. Yeah. Because we're happier, the business progresses No, I know, better. but you're talking. So, okay. This is so, guys, so, we're not, I'm sorry. I know everyone's getting sussy vibes. Let's go down this rabbit hole together. Guru Gossip says uh, Valeria and her scammer husband, May 2nd, 2019. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Here's the link from Snopes. It says, here's a link of independent research article about her husband's scammy businesses. You should also be aware that Valer Valeria is as much involved in this too because of the dirty money she spends and her is her husband's. His money is her money. They made a statement in one of her videos. Uh, Sure, whatever. Okay, media firm provider. This is Snopes.com. Allegedly owes money to several angry Facebook publishers. The company gained prominence by asserting they were a compliment compliance with facebook's rules at the time when a few other firms were they were not and other former clients were duped the story is a part of our continuing series on miss influencers inc which highlights the myriad ways in which celebrities and higher profile social media accounts are used and misused to dismantle questionable information the report follows our original reporting of the company provider which created a viral content for celebrities and high profile facebook pages to share in return a fraction of Ad revenue generated by those pages. Our previous reporting highlighted how providers skirted Facebook's rules to gain an advantage in the economy. If you logged into Facebook this year, chances are material originating with the company provider crossed your timeline. And more than likely, well, I don't, I'm not on Facebook. And more likely than not, you saw the material shared from the Facebook page of a celebrity of a prominent influencer. The content, which would not necessarily have been accurate or responsive or, wait, oh, Brittany. That content, which would not necessarily have been accurate or responsibly reported would likely to have been uplifting ador uplifting adorable terrifying or anger provoking okay where are their names where are their names okay provider ceo gary however bragged and since deleted posts that he had a solution which would make his company's business model compliant with facebook gary's solution was that the inclusion of custom software that appended the name of the Facebook page or celebrity sharing provider's story below that that of the actual author giving each article the appearance that it had been co-authored by a quote featured which person 
uh, each person sharing the post. Sorry, my God, I cannot read for the life. Mother claims these makeup removing wipes cause skin reaction. Okay, provider is always provider content is always current and sharp. Their writers are talented and their website makes their best content easy to find. And then Teach and Chong contributor. Okay, celebrity, little Wayne celebrity, young money, DH Hooli celebrity. Okay. Mother claims, okay. We first reported on providers sleight of hand in, two, in uh, May of 20, 26th of May, 2018. And as a part of the reporting, we emailed Facebook a request for comment on providers' deception use of the code to generate co-authorship bylines. At the time, a Facebook spokes, uh, spokesperson told us that such a practice would, in theory, be contrary to their policies and that page violating such policies would expect to see the distribu distribution of, and monetization significantly reduced or even shut down. Okay. Um, I'm skipping along. To make matters even worse, provider on the 29th of May, Facebook again updated their branded content rules in a way which would be crushing to providers' business. They began to crack down on manufactured sharing or inauthentic sharing of the same articles on multiple unrelated pages. Okay, great. We'd love to see it. In an unsolicited email, um, uh, Let's see. Da, 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 da. In an unsolicited email following our original report, one anonymous individual claiming an association with the provider described, quote, the shit show that's taking place, end quote, thanks to the loss of these publishing uh, privileges. Ever since our May reporting, provider has allegedly withheld money it owes its publisher per partners. Provider CEO or provider CEO Gary blah, 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 declined to comment on a detailed list of questions we sent him, citing ongoing discussions with Facebook. Facebook likewise declined to respond to the detailed list of questions or offer comment on anything regarding provider status as a publisher for the story. Okay. Okay. Another former provider publisher partner, a man in Pakistan who runs on several high traffic Facebook pages and wished to remain anonymous for fear that Facebook would punish his pages, told us via Skype that he received the same canned response when he asked about payment. His frustration was palatable. Go up. Hi, thank you for reaching out. Delayed payment. Please know we are currently waiting for payment from Facebook. As soon as we receive it, we will send out payments. Sorry for any inconvenience and thank you for your understanding. Our office is closed during the holiday and the weekend and holiday. We will try our best to respond promptly. Okay, so is this the business that he said shut down and then so on and so forth? Because this is interesting. Oh, my God. There's so much to this. Oh, my God. This article is so long, bro. Okay, if you guys want to read it, I'll share it in the chat. Because I did not know we were going to go on this freaking deep dive of this couple. Okay, so apparently there's some sussy bucka energy happening. Sussy bucka, sussy bucka. Okay, so let's go back to their podcast and let's finish it. But this is interesting. So we were getting now us in our little bubble here. Okay, us here, we were getting little sussy vibes. We were getting a little concerned. Now, some people in my chat were like very excited. They really like this relationship, blah, blah, blah. And again, I'm always like, why is there something always sussy about like certain kinds of people? And the question is, I don't know if these articles are totally correct. I don't know what's going on, but it is one of those things, right? Curious. I'm curious. You know what I mean? I wonder what is going to come out of all of this, right? I wonder, because all these business gurus, that's the one problem with YouTube, is so many people have these like, we're entrepreneurs, we make lots of money, look how rich we are. But did you do it ethically? Are you doing it? Now, it sounds like he's just a game player. Like, in a lot of ways, Kris Jenner is just a game player. She's like, how can I exploit my family for views, money, and consistency? And like I said, a part of me wishes I could be so dysfunctional, you know? Because, like, but also, who cares about money that much? Right? Like, who cares about money this much? And that's the question. Why do we care about money this much? Or is it status? For him, it feels like status. And he does belittle her. I wonder if she'll leave him. What do you guys think? No offense. I know these are real people and they're in a real relationship. But why do I feel like if he really, I wonder if she said she likes being sort of naive. You know what I mean? Because she knows that if she really isn't going to be, she will leave him. 
right? Am I crazy? Why do I feel that way? I just feel like if she is going to be introspective and she's going to be thoughtful, she might leave him. The people saying they like this couple are the same ones uh, who said you reminded them of Leo Skeppy. No. No. Leo Skeppy is also, oh, I love, I love how horrible he is. He's so bad. Monkey D. Trevi, welcome to the members. Yay. Thank you. It's interesting. What do you guys think? Like, what do you guys think? I feel like it could happen because look, he's got that vibe. I hate to say it, but isn't it funny how it's always a vibe? People just look a certain way and like guilty by association a little bit with the vibe. But yeah, he's he puts her down while trying to lift her up. He wants her to be a trophy, but never actually like the main character in the relationship. He wants to uplift her as like this amazing thing. But like, it sounds like he failed in his businesses. But also maybe he was successful later. Maybe, well, see, why don't they give me the vibe of like a cool like underdog story? Like we failed, but we made it work. You know, he definitely seems status driven. He wants her to be like Oprah. Good point. Oprah is deaf. Oprah believes she's Oprah though. The reason Oprah is so good at her job is she believes her shtick. Oprah believes she's Oprah. Do you get what I'm saying? Oprah believes she's herself so much. She tried to raise money for the people of Hawaii recently instead of like donating the money, right? Like in a significant way. Like like Oprah believes Oprah. That's why everyone could be an O-mom because they could get behind someone who believed in themselves that much. That's why Andrew Tate sells himself because he believes himself so much that his fans believe him too. It's why he'll fail if he actually goes with the idea that it's a character. The moment Andrew Tate really starts to make people believe himself included it's a character, he'll start to fumble. He'll look like a loser again. He'll look like a lo loser kid who came from nothing with a family that was broken. And he'll be like, I'm nothing. I had to like fight to survive. And he'll go back to remembering that he's just that kid that's a loser like the rest of us. Right? But Oprah believes she's Oprah. And if Andrew Tate wants to maintain his status, he should probably keep believing he's Andrew Tate. Do you get what I'm saying? Like the thing, it takes so much cognitive dissonance to be successful in this like industry because you kind of have to sell yourself. You know, you have to convince people they should like you better than everyone else. And it's really hard to be that egotistical your whole life. It is really difficult unless you're Kris Jenner, unless you're maybe him. You know what I mean? But he seems, yeah, him bragging about Kim, Chris Jenner is funny to me. Yeah. Hmm. Teal says if she grows, I think she's going to look at him differently. Me too. Yeah. I think he really needs her more than she needs him. I agree with that. Yeah. I th I'm getting that energy as well. But she thinks she feels like this is a soulmate relationship. So maybe it is. Maybe it was or maybe it was meant to be, which is different. Or like maybe they were meant to meet. Maybe she's happily a scammer too. Unless he gets caught, then she was ignorant. Maybe. Maybe this is a part of the shit. Maybe they're covering, oh, maybe 4D chess. Maybe it's 4D chess and they're covering their tracks right now to convince us that she's innocent because he knows he's going to prison. Oh my God, I'm the loudest drinker in the world. Maybe they already know he's going to prison. This is so fan fiction right now. I don't know this is his fan fiction that they've convinced us She's also innocent, so she can stay with the kids. But people, you know, I'm just saying. He promised to take care of her. And now she's grown enough to see he's a scammer, can't provide for her. She might leave him unless she wants to stay willfully ignorant. Maybe. And maybe he's not a scammer. Maybe people are wrong. But it's the way he does business. It's the way he does business. But it's also the way a lot of people are willing to do business if the law let them. And that's something to think about, too. Is how would you play the game if you that's what I mean would be careful of drama clicks thumbnails it's all fine but there's a certain threshold people cross that make me look at them different you know like mm, you know and he did that allegedly with his provider company right mm, mm. Uh, it's now. all no no but hold on yeah it's all no I'll get to it so mm -hmm. it's all to, it's all work the benefit of us going and relaxing on that trip even though on the surface it appeared to be a pleasure trip and it was for us just to be together yeah but it, it contributes to the benefit of our family we're sitting in this podcast right now this is our business this is our work this yeah. is contributing to the benefit of the family yeah right when we're making a deal 
with a brand, it contributes to the benefit of the family. When you and I are talking about business, I know I think it, you're, so to you're me, answering, everything flows into the same place. Yeah, but you're answering something different. I feel like, first of all, the nana, nana I'm sorry, that was annoying. That's <laughs> you, okay. said, you said the ignorance. I was like, you don't have to, you don't have to. Oh. Whatever. But um, to me, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about our relationship as a husband and wife, moving from that way of being of a husband and wife to moving now of you and I running a business. I'm the talent and you're kind of the... You're more, you know, than, you're more than the talent. No, but. more than the talent, but you were, you were very much pushing. I didn't know where to push. I was pushing on my talent, but you were pushing on all these different things in, in the business, right? Like we built an infrastructure yeah. and you were very much heading that, you know, um, evolution of the business. But when you would come to me and, you know, let's say during dinner and we're talking about, you know, a deal or something that we disagree on, there was quite a bit of tension, tension between us. Yeah. In the beginning of the business, because back then it was you, me and one employee, I think, right. Mm -hmm. We had Emma that was doing video and that's it. So that was difficult for I me. I loved doing invoices. Invoices was my favorite. <laughs> you were, you were better at it than I was. That's no, for sure. I clearly was better at it than you, but <laughs> It's like the thing I hate doing the most. Shout out to Kieran, our CFO. <laughs> I know. But back then, like that was challenging for me because we were like, you know, running our household together very tightly. Yeah. And then now we're also running the business very tightly. It was a lot for me. Because at the time you subscribed to, to, to traditional um, male, female roles in a marriage. Mm -hmm. That was your thought pattern because that's what you knew. That did she want to work or did he ask her to go back to work because they needed money, which is fine. That's what you knew growing up, that a man does this, a woman does this. They they separate to accomplish their separate goals. Then they come back together to have their personal life and to raise children. Yeah. So you were you were in living head. in that you were living in yeah. that societal box that was created for you. Whereas for me, I grew up in a very different situation where I didn't have like a stable family unit. Mm -hmm. So to me, there's just, I'm like unidirectional. It's just, we have to achieve. We have to achieve. We have to uh, gain. We have to do, you know. So to me, I, I don't have these boundaries that, these artificial boundaries that society created that you subscribe to. I don't have... I am very, am I being gaslit as we're talking? Am I being gaslit as we're, am I being gaslit? Did he not say he mirrored her with an emphasis? Emphith, emphith, emphasis did he not make a move in a certain way did he not also believe in the gender roles i'm so confused i'm so confused has he specified what her talent is i think she's just a social media person like this she's a youtuber her talent is social media and interviewing she this is her channel we're on so we're on her channel right now she's interviewing her husband have them yeah to me it's just like benefit all the time chase <laughs> benefit whether yeah he has trauma he has trauma where he can't relax so he's hyper independent and fixated on wealth i get it like he's just got like a lot of trauma he's go to therapy for that obviously um he literally called himself a traditional man yeah what is he talking about he like built a bubble for himself and now he's upset about it whether it's health money uh evolution spirituality whatever benefits us we just go for mm -hmm. i don't i don't have oh she's an ex-model how is she an ex-model if they got together at 20 and like, wait, now I'm confused. And now does fashion and beauty content. Okay. So she was a model before they got married. Is that, did he pursue her because she was a model and then she quit her job? These constructs that I subscribe to. I, you definitely changed that a lot for me because yeah, it's true. I had a very specific idea in my head of how everything needs to go down. Okay. And when it didn't, it was very difficult for me to reorganize the way I okay, so like she had a bubble pop, like okay, I'm all about the construct talk. Envision my life, okay, um, and our life together. I had to learn a lot too because for me, I saw the I saw the path clearly, mm -hmm. and I would push you, and I saw that you would resist, mm -hmm. and I had to learn, and I think the tensions got less when I had to learn to let you learn at your own pace, and then you would meet me where I was already standing waiting for you. Yeah. And I think we've gotten there. And I think I think we've done, we, we've had a lot of progress in that. A lot of progress. By the way, when I go to Bloomberg.com to see his information on dealfind.com or his websites, like nothing comes up for some reason on my end. 
It says he's the president and co-founder of it. But like when I click on it, nothing shows up. You know what I mean? And now they work at like, you know, doing content creation stuff with like brands and stuff. But again, okay, this is going to sound so funny to you guys, but maybe not. This is what I learned. Okay. The little bit of networking that I have done for business people, this is why it feels sort of scammy, but it also is the best way to make money. Look, I'll, I'll just, I'll tell you the trade secrets and whether or not you believe me, it's up to you. But this is why I know I'll never be like wealthy because I just, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. I just, it feels so icky to me. But I, I understand why people do it. Okay. One, one, I'll do it in one way. So I'll take it. Let me explain it to you this way. So there's collaborations. This is like the best way to do it, the most ethical way to do it, but also gets dramatic and drama. The best way to build a business is on YouTube. It's to collab, 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 collab with other YouTubers. So your audiences cross pollinate and you guys end up like sharing audiences, which is really great. And then you boost your numbers together and then people on the internet know you as a click and then the click gets sold as a narrative like David Dobrik did. Really successful click, had a bunch of collabs, everybody made money off each other. And the moment the ship went down, because there was always and it will always be a main character of a click. After the ship went down, the other people had to figure out if they could survive the ship going down, which some of the people in David Dobrik's group did and others absolutely could not survive without him. And the audience didn't care about them without David there. We've seen that with other types of content creators, right? Which is why, again, I always try to focus my career on being my own because I've tried to associate myself with different people in the past, like different progressives and different people. And the moment there's tension, the moment the main character doesn't get their spotlight, the moment there's like a, it doesn't work. So this actually happened recently too. Well, that's a, okay. I don't want to go on a tangent. There's a bunch of YouTube clicks where this happens, where there's always like a main character and then there's everybody else. Like I love OTK. Okay. Example. I love, um, uh, bacon and eggs. I like, um, Emaru and Tectone and Asmin, but I really just watch for Asmin because he's like the person that I'm focused on. But I do sometimes watch Emaru on Twitch mostly to see what she's doing as a content creator, less as like I watch Emaru. But at the same time, I kind of like her on in the background sometimes when I'm editing. So maybe, but mostly I like Asmin, right? Because he's the star to me. He's the main character as a con as a content consumer that I'm like, okay, right. And then there's different people here and there. You collab, you collab, it boosts numbers. It gives people an idea of what click you're in. It makes people like, okay, it's really successful. But of course, like I said, there's always a main character. And or if it breaks off, the question is, do you get to survive outside of that? And that's really hard, right? Um, okay. Um, Evie Lupine is a different example. Evie and I were literally friends. Now, we did start off as YouTube collaborators together, but eventually we became like literal friends right before and the friendships ended now and that's what it is and that's life right but we used to be literal friends like which was different like I considered Evie one of my closest friends um so that's different we were like we yes we started off as content creators but in my opinion from my perspective we were very close friends um like I trusted Evie with a lot of my life and I felt like we were really close um, so I, that feels different to me. It wasn't just business and it wasn't about business, but it did help us to collab together. Absolutely. But we're very different on our own too. We're very successful on our own as well, which is different. So that's like very much in the past. Um, wishing her the best Avi, but like I considered her from my perspective, a very close friend, but think about more like when I was, um, other things like other things, uh, other YouTubers, like, um, uh, like even you can think of Destiny Sphere or I said Asmin or like David Dobrik, like there's whole groups. And then again, they have to survive on their own big groups. OK, um, that's a really good way of building a business. Think about Fresh and Fit and Sneeko and Zerka and all those people. Also a really good way to build a group, you know. OK, now here's where it gets fishy to me. Here's where I start to feel very uncomfortable. Are you ready? So I start to feel really uncomfortable when they do sort of, um, how do I say this? Like kind of like coaching services, but not coaching. Kind of like um, courses, but not courses. I was, I've been in opportunities where I've gotten to do 
courses with people or stuff or invited into people's groups and like they sponsored me or I got like helped in or maybe I paid for some things only to realize like the way these people keep a business is to basically make the money off of the networking they're doing, i.e. their friends. But the money is not always coming from outside sources. It's coming from the people you're networking, their sources. So like with Selling Sunset, a lot of the homes that they're selling people to are people they know. Oh, this is my client. This is my friend. So a lot of networking is getting a customer base that's also quote unquote your friend. But the dilemma with that, and I struggle with this as well, is like, I don't want to make money off my friends. Like, I'd really prefer to make money off of customers that have a professional relationship with me. But the business you're in, even the business I'm in, it's hard not to feel like friends. It's why, like therapists, it's such a struggle. What if you're a therapist who has a client where you guys would have been such good friends? You still can't be friends with that person. It's super it doesn't work. You can't go to your therapy. Like you can't go to your friends for therapy, you know? And so it's kind of this idea of like, there's one way to do it. That's I'm willing to collab. I think collaborations are healthy and I can do those, but I'm not willing to like sell my brand to a group. Like if you get to um, Myron's book, Fresh and Fit, Myron's book in the dedication part, it's dedicated to all the bros he does collabs with, including Sneeko. It's literally a dedication to fellow streamers and bros. And I'm like, everything is just like a business. Like you're basically making money off of everyone's networking connections, but everyone thinks they're an entrepreneur in the business. So Andrew Tate makes money off of other financial bros who want to make money like him. Then they give him money and then he makes a bunch of money. And now people pay him more money because he made a bunch of money off these guys. And then these guys go and they sell their own courses to other people that are making less money than them. So then they rise the ranks. And then it's like a whole pyramid scheme of not pyramid scheme. It's real, but it's not real. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. So Andrew Tate gets validated as being rich because these guys want to learn what they don't know from him. So he does that. Then he gets them higher than the guys who are poorer than them. And then the poor guy, and you get what I'm saying? So it kind of works, but they're all kind of selling the, the same thing with different, their own spin, which is valid. It's like philosophy. Everyone's selling their own philosophy with their own spin a little bit. It's interesting, you know, but networking is weird. It's, I don't really like it very much. And I think it's kind of creepy, but also it, like everyone feels like this is what we need to do. So I feel like that's what's happening with this couple, not to derail, but with this couple, same thing, right? It's like they're in a business, they're networking, everything he's doing is for work. Like even my husband and I, we had to sit down and negotiate his boundaries because he's not a social media person. He doesn't have an Instagram or Twitter. Like he doesn't post himself on the internet. He's a totally offline husband. And because of that, you can imagine it's so weird. Like my whole life's on the internet, basically. I was like, oh, like we had to talk about that where I was like, well, how much of you is allowed on the internet? How much can I talk about? What can I share? Um, can I, you know, I think the only visual of him on the internet um, is like a shadow of him when we first, basically when we first met, I put a shadow of him on my Instagram and I was like, he's a keeper. And it's like, that's it. Because like, he doesn't want to be posted on the internet, which is valid. He like, he has his consent matters. So it's like, what can I talk about? Um, unlike him, this guy here, we're watching Gary. He's like, everything is for business, kids, vacations, us together. Like families do that. Kim Kardashian, um, makes Kim Kardashian is so popular right now because of, because of her kid who, by the way, is very funny, but like, okay. Can we know why he is so offline? Because he's a human. Like, guys, do you know there are normal parts of the population that are not on the internet? None of my family's on the internet. My my best friend, like, why would they be on the internet? None of my friends have are in the internet. Like, none of them are on the internet. Like, if they have Instagrams, they're private for friends and family at most. Nobody, I'm the only schmuck in the family and friends who have a public presence on the internet. All my best friends are not on the internet. At most, my best friend, she and I did a video together and I blurred out her face. She didn't even want her face on the internet. I She only did her, her, um, her voice. I come from a background where most people aren't on the internet. So like that's what's normal. 
we're the weird ones. You know, like, isn't that funny? Like, my whole life is so, it's just so interesting. So anyways, that's really why. He's just a normie. His parents are normies. They're just like, why would I be on the internet? Like, why would I do that? They have normal people jobs and lives, you know? Isn't that interesting? Blew my mind. I was like, you're off the internet? Whoa. It's like, cool. I love that. But I, I love being in social, I love social media. I love just being on the internet, right? But anyways, great question. But isn't that funny? Great question though. Okay, so it's like, oh, am I the weird one? You know, kind of, right? So again, Gary is saying their life is on the internet. Their life is to make money. And it's true. If you want to do it that way, you can make a lot of money. It, lots of people do that. Lots of people use their family, friends. Look at them kind of using their age difference relationship to make some views, which is smart of them, right? Oh my God, if my partner and I made videos together, I mean, to some extent, we'd make a little bit more money because people are curious. Look at us. We're watching a total. I, I've never seen these people in my life. And I'm like, oh, let's watch it. They're talking about their relationship. So it's there's money to be had in talking about your life. But the consequence is that it could filter into your relationship and cause issues. So again, since we're team players, we're going for the strongest like health of the team. And if anybody on the team has any hesitance, I say don't do it. Don't do it. Not unless you're 1,000% enthusiastic and excited and want to do it. Don't do it, you know? I, I mean, think, it's been also seven years. I'm happy that there is. But most the of the progress, progress has been recently. Yes. A lot of breakthroughs. Yeah. <laughs> you never had any reservation about us working together. It never crossed my mind. Were you scared when you decided to really go all in into kind of my personal brand? Because I feel like you mentioned that you were in between businesses, but you're already doing your own thing. You know, you had your own entrepreneurial path. Did it not scare you to lean into this so heavily? Mm. It scare me. What do you mean? Like, what, what would I be scared Your of? identity, um, your... Great question. Great question. Okay, let's see. This will be interesting. Because if he's just supportive and loving, then I'm here for it. But let's see. Again, you know, you're, you're subscribing to some construct that was taught to you that doesn't exist. Okay, so me. talk, get, walk me through it. So you didn't have any reservation to really go all in into this business and like putting me as like, I, this is. Like Andrew Tate could probably never do this, right? Because Andrew Tate has to be the center, which is fine. I, I, well, I could, I wouldn't forego my career for like. My partner wouldn't ask me to, but if he wanted to be a social media person, I would 100% support him in that. But we wouldn't go all into his business at all because I still have a successful business. But it sounds like because his was failing, it makes sense to go into her business, which was succeeding, which I just think sounds like a good business move. So I'm not completely upset about that, right? That makes sense. This is the phase. This is the brand for the effort and time mm -hmm. that either you and or I would put into it, the maximum yield financially would be from this. So that was just a very simple, okay. like that was, that was right. my feeling. So when I kind of looked all over at what the opportunities were at that time, mm -hmm. I was just like, this is the, op the best opportunity right now. So where I'm going to put my effort is here. So he didn't have like a dream of his own sort of, Interesting. So he kind of created businesses to create businesses, which is probably why they didn't succeed long term because it wasn't his dream. But he wanted to succeed. And so this is how he succeeded. And OK. Yeah. So Valeria has time. I now have time. We want to make money. We want to achieve. This is the best and most efficient use of our time to create something that's going to have value. What that item was, the fact that it was your personal brand. Whatever. Okay. That cool. didn't. That yeah. wasn't. So a, that was one aspect yeah. to it, and then the other, the other aspect to it was, I felt that it was. I was very motivated by the early feedback from the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. I kind of. I don't mind that. That's a good business move. Let's check out her Instagram because she has two million followers, so she's really successful. Though now I'm hesitating to wonder if they're real because if his company was botting, allegedly, or if he had any issues with number botting, like that makes me wonder. You know what I mean? Um, I don't like, I don't really, there's something about him that I don't particularly love. But okay, so she has her own personal brand. Here's her Insta. Cute.
Hmm. 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 I don't know. Something. It's not as polished of a page as I thought it would be. If I'm being honest. Oh, there's Gwyneth. The biggest scammer of them all. Ah, uh, yes. Goop. Not that she's a scammer. That's not. Sorry. I meant that pejoratively. That's not. Uh, I don't mean that literally. I mean that. It's a joke. It's just a joke. She sold a BDSM kit on Goop that was literally like a trash BDSM kit for like $1,500, but it was bullshit. Rich people be doing bullshit all the time. Rich people are selling you fucking bullshit all the time. I'm fucking not a fan of Gwyneth. Sorry. Not a fan. See, I'm a bitch. I could never become famous because I could never. If they're like, oh my God, do you want to meet Gwyneth? I'd be like, we could get coffee, I think. But like, I don't fucking hang out with her. She's kind of a piece of shit. Like her goop stuff. It's fine. Whatever. You do you. I don't care. I just think it's bullshit. Um, Brittany, do you think you can be a successful streamer without having any other social media? And successful would be like your level in this case. Um, um I don't know. You know, because like YouTube... YouTube is the billboard, right? Because like I'm now finally making decent or okay money on AdSense. And it took me a long time to follow TOS and to stop wanting to be such an individual. I've been really good about my language. Have you guys noticed? I'm trying really hard to not say certain words that I was raised saying my whole life. But it's one of those things where um, YouTube is like the billboard for people because AdSense is so difficult to work with if you want to make sort of a livable income. And keep in mind, it's not pre-taxed. So everything we make on the Super Chats, which is why if you guys want to donate through like um, my other donation options, which are like Patreon or they're in the link, like look at the description. I have them linked there. Then you'll see like other options that are like they don't take as much of a cut. You know what I mean? Or AdSense, if it doesn't exist, you can't give super chats. But for me, it exists because I follow TOS. But it is one of those things where it's not always the easiest thing to use to be successful. So the reason you use other social media platforms like Patreon would be considered its own social media platform is to actually bring in income or you would use Twitter to get people to notice you. So if you just had a YouTube channel you could maybe make enough ad revenue, but like how would people find your channel and how would people know where you are? And like Instagram is the reason so many OF content creators are successful because OF is hidden behind a paywall and it's a specific website that not everybody is on. But Instagram has more people on it. So if you want to be really successful with OF, like I'm considering opening a second Instagram just dedicated to like bringing people into my OF would be very different Instagram posts than the ones I post now. Because the ones I post now are for like me and my like everyday life. But OF content, you're supposed to post very specific kind of pictures on Instagram to bring in OF customers. It's very different. So I was thinking about that. I was like, should I start a completely different Instagram and not even like promote it necessarily off of, I have a Twitter that's dedicated to my OF stuff. Just promote it there because this is my main branding. This is how I mainly make money. And even here, I can't have OF links in the descriptions. YouTube will give you a strike. You can't have OF links in your Instagram. You Like Instagram will take your Instagram down. So I have BrittanySimon.com. That's how I kind of, you know, promote myself. So even my own website, I need to promote myself because these social media websites won't let you always promote everything you're doing. So yeah, could you be successful on YouTube? Do you mean monetarily? Or do you mean just views? Because views, yes. But you have to follow AdSense. You have to get, you know, an AdSense account. It's a lot. It's like a lot goes into it. But does that answer your question? 
you know, like when people are like, yo, Valeria, we love you. You helped me, blah, 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 blah. I, I read and I still do. I read every single comment, even the nasty ones. And I read them all. And that really all? motivates me when mm -hmm. people. All of them? That's some dedication. Can you recommend BDSM toys? If you guys are going to get BDSM toys, truly, like lifestyle toys, toys that are expensive and are going to make you last, um, I recommend going to local sex shops that have a BDSM community that have handmade toys. I recommend going to BDSM events and dungeons and going to their marketplaces. I recommend going to FetLife and finding people who make these toys. I recommend all of my floggers, all my all my expensive items. Like there are doable items. Like Adam and Eve has passable items. But if you want quality, they're going to last years and years and years. You're going to be spending a lot of money. But also I get mine from people that were like locally made. Like um, Firebird Leather. Actually. Are they still in business? Yes, they are. Let's go. Go to Firebird Leather here. This is my favorite content creator. They're amazing. They've actually sent me some free stuff in the past. I know um, they're really good people. I know it's run by really good people. All their items are very quality, very good. Firebirdleather.com. They're really, really great. Um, really recommend them. And they're just like the sweetest people and all their stuff is great. Like I still have one of their floggers. Um, it's an amazing flogger. Like I love their work. So really, really recommend their work. People, especially young women, talk about how much you help them and how you motivate them and how you inspire them. That's really fuel for me. That that you know. So when it was happening in the early days, that to me, I knew we were on the right path. Any venture I had before that, it was always like only about the money. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the value that I would provide, I knew I needed to create value in order to make money. Right. Mm. But what was driving the creation of that value in any of my businesses was making money. Right. But I discovered with you something new that, yes, I knew I had to create value. You and I had to create value through your content in order to make money. But the creation of the value also gave me satisfaction. Right. Whereas okay. I believe that. That's that's really normal. That's... um. That's true. I think they're the same. Like if I didn't feel connected to this content, if I didn't feel like there was value here, I think I'd feel, I, I mean, I would still have a job and I would probably still do it. Lots of YouTubers don't feel inherent value from their job, but I'm really lucky that I do. So, you know, maybe that could be very true for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Past businesses, the creation of value didn't give me satisfaction. Mm. The only satisfaction they gave me was they led to making money. Here, the value that you create and that I help you create through the structuring and through all the stuff that you know I've done is that we're actually creating value that is meaningful to the world. Mm. I'll tell you this, Yaya. You said mainly thinking about views or voices. I hate social media, but I'd like to do something similar to you. I just want to talk to people and hear different ideas, but sis isn't even on Discord. I'll tell you this. I am I need to ramp up what I'm doing. I'm not on enough social media platforms. My channel will die if I do not bring in new viewers. So I'll be really frank with you guys. Like I'm working really hard to put up. Like I need to put up more TikToks. I need to get my shit together because I want to make this last long. And you can't do it casually and have it succeed. You can do it casually and make a little bit of money but if you want to make real money where you're paying your taxes quarterly and you're running a business and you're doing all that stuff very different right but if you just want to start a youtube channel to talk to people you can do that for free but discord is what people use to talk to each other so if you're not on the same social media websites that you need to contact people how are they going to talk to you no one's going to talk to you just because you have a youtube channel like that doesn't happen, right? People talk to me because I have a Discord. So they use Discord to call me and like we use these apps to talk to each other. Um, but if you're thinking about making it a business, like a real business to make like a living off of, you got to you gotta do it. And it's exhausting. Like I'm exhausted. I'm not going to lie to you. There's not enough hours in the day for me to do it all because I am the content creator and I'm the editor and I'm the social media person. Like even Abba and Preach are like looking for a TikTok editor right now just to do TikToks. And I'm like, fuck, like, I wish I could afford that, but I, I can't afford to pay anybody. So I'm like, okay, like I have to do it so I can eventually learn or afford to pay somebody to do it for me in the future. Um, so anyways, if you want to make this, it depends. If you want to make it a hobby, I think you can be casual, but still get a discord so people can talk to you. If you want to make it a business, start thinking about the fact that the IRS is going to come for you after you make that first $500 or whatever it is online.
Remember, Patreon, Discord, all of these are not pa Discord, Patreon, um, AdSense. None of these people cut their taxes out for you. You got to pay all those taxes. You got to do everything ahead of time. You know what I mean? And my perspective changed on creating meaningful value. But I think there's an audience for everybody. So if you want to be a content creator, I think there's an audience for you. Do it. Versus values strictly <laughs> engineered for financial gain mm -hmm. is that now we have children. Mm -hmm. And now as they become more call it sentient in terms of their consciousness as they become as they awaken more from being children and they start being really conscious of the, their surroundings i have placed um kids are very conscious a huge value yeah in them looking at what you and i are doing yeah and being like those are my parents yeah and setting that example for them so my priorities have shifted since we had children mm -hmm. so i see a lot that, that's why i love this business yeah that's why i love do you what think you're we would have worked together if it wasn't this do you think we would have gone into business together i don't know i guess we'll never know <laughs> remember when kanye said what well what would happen if i stopped winning i guess we'll i guess never we'll never know, know. <laughs> <laughs> okay um, kanye should know at this point because you know he struggled to win um Brittany, how do you deal with this job? Maybe not working anymore for you in like 10 years or so since social media and stuff is not so stable. Are you planning to earn enough so that you don't have to work later in life? I will work my whole life. I'm like my dad. There won't be a time I retire. I even I don't even believe in retirement for myself. Like I'm going to want to work, right? So my dad is technically like he could retire, but he's not going to retire. Like we're not retired. We're not those people who retire. So we'll work. But um. I'm also a millennial in this economy and I didn't start taking my financial security seriously until 30. So I will be working naturally anyways, unless I made like an abundance of money. But like, I don't know if you guys have seen retirement rates recently, but like there's no job you're going to have where you're not working. Most of the people I know work until 65. And so I'm going to be working for another 40 years, right? Like I'm going to be working a long time. Um, now with that said, uh, I don't think I'll ever not succeed on social media. I think I'll be here a long time. I've been here since a long time and it's only gone up. I don't even think I've hit my peak yet. I think I'll hit my peak in my 40s. I think I'm going to make the most money I've ever made in my 40s. I think I'm only going to make more money as I age. I do not see me falling off. I know a lot of YouTubers are always like, oh, like Graham Stephan was talking about how your YouTube life is only five to seven years and then you fall off of YouTube. But I'm the opposite where... I only got more successful as I age and as I became a person because I think what I'm selling is different. I'm selling like life and me. And so I think I'm just going to get better with age. And I think my channel is just going to grow like it always has. And so I, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait for it. I think it's going to be such a blessing. And I'm just doing the work now to get that Brittany prepared because I think I am going to write a book in my 40s. I think I am going to be much more popular in my 40s. And I think I have to get ready for that because I already don't like that much attention. And I I predict it's going to be very wonderful. But also, like, I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready to be popular. I'm not ready to, like, sell a book. I don't think I could handle the stress of it right now. But I think I I think that's probably what I'll do with my life. And I think I'll age into the the ability to do so. Like, if I write a book on successful relationships, well, I should probably have a long one first, you know? So I should probably be married for 10 years before I start writing books about it. And I should probably be in my 40s and I should probably have some experience and I should probably be a little bit wiser and I should probably, you know, I should earn the right to do those things. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm really excited. You know, 40s will be actual cult, Brittany. Stop it. But I can't wait. I just think it's going to be so nice, you know. So do you plan uh, for social media to be your job until 65 or do you plan... Do you not plan that far ahead? No, yeah. 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 Yeah, I do. I do. I plan to be an old person online. I plan to do OF online. I plan to do everything I'm doing now or whatever I end up doing later, but I plan to be working into my 60s. But social media is just a part of it. You know how many 60-year-olds I watch on social media? 60 is not old anymore. Um, how, how old are all the guys? How old is Bill Gates? Wait, how old is Bill Gates? Bill Gates is literally 68 years old. The president of the United States is basically 100. Why would I stop doing social media in my 60s? Do you guys get what I'm saying? Like old people are on social media and social media is just going to evolve, right? AI, social media, like age is not 
you know what I mean? Like it, you know what I mean? Like it's just gonna, you know, old Britney is gonna, you know what I mean? No, it's not gonna change. I'm just gonna evolve and adapt as it adapts. Like as it evolves, I'll adapt. You know what I mean? That's all I'm worried about. Did you go to college? No, I went to community college for a second and then I just decided to work. Yeah, I'm not very good at school. I, I'm not a fan. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? But yeah, oh, same. I can't wait for my 40s too. I think it's going to be the best. Me too, Hayda. I agree. I think it's going to be the best. You know? Ugh. Exciting. Okay. Hey, let's talk about um, kind of the evolution of our business, because when mm. we started and I was actually I had a podcast recording last week and I was talking about it. I was talking about how with who with Liv. <laughs> thank you. I was I had a uh, recording last week with Liv Perez and we were talking about building a legacy brand. And it's interesting mm. because her perspective was like, you know, Valeria, it feels like you're not just a content creator, just like an influencer. There's something like bigger behind it. Mm -hmm. She also said like, I didn't know you have, you know, the, this whole company and the whole infrastructure. And that's when, you know, that idea of like, we're building a legacy brand really. Ah, uh, see, making the decision to build a legacy brand is a big deal. Cause I'm not doing that. See, the Kardashians did that. Guys, if I made the decision to build a legacy brand, that's a completely different game, right? I'm not thinking about leaving money to my kids. I'm not thinking about, I'm thinking about taking care of family at most, but I'm not thinking about a legacy brand. That talk, that is a, that is a dedication. In no way, shape or form am I interested in a legacy brand. I don't care if anyone remembers me after I die. I don't care if anyone even like says my name. I don't even care if you go to my funeral. You do you, I'll be dead. But I am not thinking about a legacy brand, right? What is a legacy brand? Le just that. It's a legacy. You're building a generational wealth legacy. You're not building a brand like a short-term brand. You're not just an influencer like she said. You're not short-term. Legacy brands are like the Kardashians attempt at a brand. Um, guys, I'm trying to think of like a uh, – they stand the test of time. Uh, who's a legacy brand? Like um, – all the like big Italian brands, you know, the Kardashians are trying. They're trying to build a legacy brand. But a, a real legacy brand is like generational. So uh, like Valentino, right? Like wouldn't like all those Italian. What are the, I don't know these brands. I'm not in that bubble. But it's all these brands that people know for so long. You know what I mean? It's like that's that's a lot. But that means your kids are involved or like big money's involved or like my dad has a business. Like Dior, Chanel, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. Not Paris Hilton. Yeah, Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton's brand, right? Legacy brands. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm, exactly. Those ones. Okay. Um, my dad is a business and like all 10 of his kids, none of us are interested in them. I don't know if Walmart's a legacy brand yet. Is it? It might be actually. Um, but maybe it's not. Um, but my dad is a business and none of his kids want it. So he won't have a legacy brand because none of us want it. None of us are going to continue on the legacy, right? We're not interested. We're so independent. We all want to do our own thing, which my parents are like, eh, what are you going to do? So my dad's like happy with it and everything, but he did think we were going to run his business. Even me, he's like, run my business. And I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to learn about it. Excuse me. I love it. But like, I don't want to. It's so successful, but like, I don't want it. Like literally, you want to talk about kids turning down money? I don't want it. Like, I wouldn't even know. It's an industry I don't care about. I would have to learn about the industry. And even my brothers that are industry adjacent, they just don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Like, we just want to do our own thing because there is a cage associated with legacy. You're a part of the brand. It's not about you anymore. But when you're just doing your own thing and you're independent, you can do whatever you want with your business. It's why I even struggle working with people. I have so much anxiety over people being dependent on me. I probably will never hire an editor. Because even though I had a really great editor a while ago, it was so fun. I feel really nervous realizing like people are dependent on me to pay their bills. Like I get very anxiety and do like I just feel so much anxiety. I don't think I could own a business where I had employees who depended on me to do well. Like I need the option to just like quit tomorrow, even though I'm not going to do it. I still need that option. And when you build a legacy brand, like where are the options? kind of came out out of me. Sure. We talk about it often. But, but I knew I it from day one. We talk about it often, but I never voiced it 
like that, you know? And for me, it was a big shift. Let's talk about how and when we decided to move from, you know, looking at it as like, oh, I create videos on YouTube to we're building a media company. Uh, what do you mean? For me, it was right away. As it soon was as right I away. I that was um, uh, uh, um, Cody and Noel. So Cody and Noel both, they had it, their own YouTube channels and they had these collabs that went really viral and it sounded really good, right? And um, they eventually decided they wanted a legacy or at least another thing outside themselves to keep the money flowing in. Because remember, even PewDiePie still takes sponsor deals. Because remember, money runs out. Whether you think you have enough of it or not, it's not the same. It's like you're, it's, life is very different, right? So Cody and Noel have a media company now where they sponsor podcasts to build their own like peop, like their own vibes, right? And I think that's beautiful and wonderful. And see how that's them thinking about something outside of their own YouTube channels because they're definitely wealthy. Like they could probably survive on their own YouTube channels for a while. They could probably just invest the money they have and live off 50K a year. But if they want to maintain wealth and make more money and live at a higher like, pay income for the rest of their life, then they have to make more money, right? So if you want to live the rest of your life off 50K, you only need to make so many millions <laughs> to invest that long term to like live off the interest or something like that, right? But if you want to do something different, if you want to live a really wealthy, extravagant life, you're going to have to make more money, my bros, which means you're going to have to work more. So Cody and Noel are really smart. They did this really great adventure together and I think that's beautiful. I'm not in that place. Like, I think I'll probably sell a book and make a bunch of money and then retire or not retire, but like put my money into savings and live off very little, but I won't live an extravagant life. I'm not a very extravagant person. I'm very low maintenance and I don't have a lot of expensive hobbies. Crocheting gets pretty expensive, but not really. And I don't do it that often. And reading books can get expensive, but not really. You know what I mean? So I think about my life. I'll probably sell a book and I'll probably chill and live like a normal life. You know what I mean? But I won't stop working. I will just work. But I'll I'll probably feel a little bit more comfortable not to work seven days a week, right? That's why I'm hustling these next two years. Seven days a week because that's the vibe right now. And then I'll probably work six days a week. And then maybe five days a week. But you know what I'm saying? I'm still at the beginning. To me, I just started my financial career. I got another 10 years before I feel like I'll hit a good spot. You know, you know, do you see yourselves doing live streams at 40? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, everybody does it. Everybody streams. All the people I watch are in their 40s and 50s. They all do live streams, radio shows. It's like Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey, everyone's like, when are you going to retire? He's like, I'm only 60 something. Why am I retiring? He does a show. He does his things. Like, I can't imagine not streaming. Like, I can't imagine not doing the business. Like, if social media is the change, let's go. You know what I mean? As soon yeah. as I decided to put my time into it, it was a business. I mean, this guy's 50. You know what I mean? What's the, why wouldn't, like, are we trying, like, why wouldn't I stream at 40? Like, you know what I mean? What would change? That's only in six years. You guys know that, right? You know I'm 40 in less than five, six years. I'll be 40 in five years. You think I won't be streaming in five years? <laughs> like, Why? Yeah. For me. I guess for me it was a slow word. That's like so interesting. And I think that's why there was a, a lot of, uh, I have yeah, to give it to all you. Our, exactly, Hayda. All our favorite comedian podcasters are like 40. Are we just saying I'm young or is something about 40? I'm not supposed to be streaming. You were, you were very patient, you know. Because no, but I was always, also, I was also very aggressive too. We, I, I do get asked all the time if we're represented by external agencies because a lot of, ah. you know, it's a big industry now, the influencer or the creator economy, and there's so many external agencies. And when we started, um, I remember we probably were signed to an agency for like two weeks. Not exclusive. Not it wasn't, exclusive. It was more than two weeks, but they wanted exclusivity, and I yeah. said no. Again, thanks to your kind of experience you just very early on recognize that we need to build everything in house because the way we want things to be done won't that, be done by other people. That wasn't why. So why? Well, I just thought we could do a better job of doing whatever they said that they were going to do. We yeah. could do a better job ourselves. Yeah. Like for example, when an agency said, give us your inbox and we're going to take your deals and negotiate on your behalf. I said, you're not going to negotiate better than me. And they said, no, no, we will. Like, they didn't know kind of my background. They said, no, 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 we're going to, we're really good. I'm like, okay. And I humored them. Yeah. And I said, great. I want you, I want to, I want you to CC me on all the emails. I mm -hmm. want to see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And so when they would respond, their response was so weak when yeah. a brand would reach out. 
They didn't know their hand they're dealing with a salesperson. No, I understand. But like their response was just so weak. They weren't positioning it to close. They weren't they weren't trying to extract value. They weren't asking the right questions. They just weren't mm. doing it right. Yeah. So I said, there's no way you guys are getting the inbox. So if you want to go non-exclusive, whatever deals you bring us, you can bring them to me. I'll look I'll look at them and then I'll bring them to Valeria and we'll decide if we see what I do is I just ignore all the emails. <laughs> I'm so bad with working with people. I just, it's very stressful working with sponsors. Sometimes, some of them are really easy to work with and some of them aren't. And then you have to have like a real, very, a very specific kind of brand um, to get the sponsors that, oh, the legality of working with sponsors is so interesting. You sign contracts and the whole thing and they expect things to do a certain way. And I just, I really get, I would rather be like fan funded. I think, who did I want? I think it Asmin. I think I was listening to Asmin. Talk to Dr. K about this or some, I don't remember who, maybe not. Oh no, uh, Cur Curtis, not Curtis Connor, the other one, iDubbbz. I was watching um, them, iDubbbz on the podcast and they were saying like being fan funded is probably the best. And I think so too, like AdSense, fan funded, merch, stuff like that is so less stressful for me. Dealing with sponsorships and everything, there's a lot of like performativeness that goes into it because you're now being sponsored that I just I have a lot of anxiety over unless you're very very big if you're very very big a sponsor will sponsor you no matter what but unless you're and if you're very very big and like okay-ish but you know oh working with brands is hard negotiating is a lot it's a lot of spoons you know what I mean it's a lot it's a lot um yeah we want to do them but there's no way you're managing you're not running our deals yeah i think that in general imagine you doing a sea geek commercial bro let's go sea geek like let's go see the thing is like i don't use sea geek so you know how um cody's so good he's always talking about sea geek and how he uses it i don't leave my house so if they're like do you use our product i was like i would not use your product if somebody paid me they're like we'll send you to a concert i was like i don't want to leave my house like I, I if i worked with a sponsor like sea geek i wouldn't I'm past my concert days, y'all. I'm past my concert days. So I can't sell it like Cody can because Cody actually goes to shows. So you know what I mean? I'd probably be a bad pick for that. If I actually went to shows, then I'd be like, I love, you know who I should get sponsored by? Aqua 4. I need to read, you know what I need to do? Somebody needs to clip every time I put on Aqua 4 in a stream. I need to put a, I need, see, I told myself to do this. I told myself, make a collage of all the times you've put on Aqua 4 in a stream and send it to Aqua 4 and be like, sponsor me. Sponsor me. Because I was so crazy when I came to Croatia. The first thing I did is like, where's your Aqua 4? I know you have it in this fucking country. Where is it? And I found it. You know what I mean? But I just don't have the spoons to go through all of my pot or all of my shows and like, make a collage of myself yet because I have to do that then I have to make like TikToks and I have to do I just don't have the spoons you know what I mean but I'll get there that's what I'm saying I'm giving myself time because I am successful I'm very good right now I can pay my bills the idea is that I have to get to a point where like I eventually eventually have like the TikToks and I have a schedule and I do that but I can't like I wake up every day and it's up to my fibro what my chronic pain is going to be like or Today we were walking in the rain and I was like, I am in so much freaking pain and the cold makes it a thousand worse. And we were like in the rain and it was cold. And so I'm like, oh my God. And so I'm like, Brittany, go home and you have to stream still. And we have to do this. And like, <sighs> and so I just go, it's okay. What will come will come. So eventually future Brittany will do all these things. But per current Brittany, she's just doing what she can. <laughs> and it's got to be good enough, you know, but like, mm, you know, mm. so anyways, General, um, historically and currently, I think that I'm so proud of the organization we built and the people that, you know, we have that run all the different departments in our business that every time we try to do anything with external, um, it doesn't really work for us because we kind of have our own way of doing things at this point. Like we created our own. Right. But it's not, it's not for everybody. Look, I also think that with external organizations, you're leaving your fate in their hands. Yeah. You're basically sitting around and waiting for them to bring you opportunities. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that when you're dealing with an agency, and there's nothing wrong, we work with a lot of agencies, so I'm not going to sit here and like talk, no, talk, but that's talk different. badly about no, them. No, 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 that's different. But they, they bring us deals. Right. And then, you know, we work with them. But the thing is, is that with an agency, it's that if you're waiting for an agency to bring you opportunities, the problem with that is they're also bringing opportunities to hundreds of other yeah. talent. Yeah. So, you know, you don't even know, but you're competing in this pool and they're going to bring it to whoever 
is most beneficial for the client and for themselves, which is what they should be doing. Yeah. Why create an additional layer of competition? So we're already competing for the brand's attention to come to us. Mm-hmm. Now you want to put it through a, another layer, which is another company. And now in that company, you're competing because they're going to decide who to give the deal to, whether it's you or to another influencer. Yeah. So it, may, it never made any sense to me. I mean, when I was modeling and I was with agencies, it was the one thing that really burned me. It was really difficult for me. I was blown away. I remember you ta- you would tell me, yeah, I did this job a year ago. I'm still waiting to get paid. I'm yeah. like, what are you talking about? You did that a it year ago. What do I you know. mean you're waiting to get paid? I hated that whole thing. Uh, and there was a lot of politics. There was a lot of like relationship keeping, you know, like mm-hmm. there's always someone that kind True. of is in there. I've heard, I've heard horror stories. Okay. One time I was working with a sponsor way back in the day and it, it paid good. I made, I was okay with that. Like I made, I was doing for a small channel. I thought I was making a lot of money and I got CC'd on an email where the person emailed us and included like 10 or 12 YouTubers and I knew their names and one of them responded back with their sponsorship price. And I emailed them right away. And I was like, hey, girl, like your name was CC'd in this email. And I saw your response. So you might want to like make sure like everybody now knows your asking price. Because like for some YouTubers, it's like salary. People don't want to talk about how much they charge companies. Because you know, when a company, company reaches out to you, some company will be like, hey, we'll give you a free product. Okay. Or we'll give you $100 or some companies come out and they'll be like, we'll pay you $1,000 or $5,000 to make a video on our product. And then a YouTuber um, can come back and say, actually, this is how much I charge. Or they'll ask, um, like, how much do you charge for a place in your videos? And then it's one of those things. Or you get a lot of spam emails, too. I've gotten a lot of I've gotten some spam emails. You'll know them, though, when you see them, like they'll offer you money. But then they'll make it like there's a way they talk and the contract they have to put out and there's a legality. So like you'll usually know, but be careful because now the new scam is click your link and put in your information here and we'll sponsor you. And it's actually just a spammer. It's a like it's a it's, it's a it's spam. So like don't do that. It's just, it's literally spam. Um, But it is interesting. And so like I saw how much they ask for, you know, their post. And honestly, I think it was fair with how big of a channel they had. So it's interesting, though, like getting an idea of how much people are charging or what's normal. Like, you know, um, I just saw that on Selling Sunset, how um, one of the girls was saying, like, I have my own business. And someone's like, what, Instagram? And it's like, yeah, you keep saying all this social media stuff is going to fail. But if you have enough of a following, like you can make money. Brands will work with you. They'll pay you 10, 20, 15, 50,000. They'll, they'll, they'll give you $100,000 to promote their product if you're popular enough. I mean, she has 2 million viewers on Instagram. She's going to get paid. You know what? She's going to make good money that way. Now, allegedly her husband's worth 40 million. I don't know if that's true, but that's what Google says. So you can make money in business. You can make money, but it just depends on what business you're going for and what your life is like. Like I said, listening to Gary talk, it's fine that he wants to make his whole life about the money. Or no, sorry, his whole... hmm, what he does about the business, like moving the family forward because they're going for legacy. But legacy is stressful. And honestly, I couldn't do it. It would take me away from my my family too much. It would take me away from my marriage too much. It would exploit my marriage for views because like that's what you have to do. And that's fine. But I don't want to do it. You know what I mean? Because it is like you have to basically like look at us. We're watching this video to examine their love, like their relationship. It's a cycle. So if you want your relationship examined like this, definitely make it content. It makes you money, but it can also be very stressful if you're not ready for it. Kind of wish they had timestamps. Most replayed is here. Okay, good. Charge of your sure. of your success. Uh, so that was, I feel like once we started building our own infrastructure, I think that was the most, the thing that I am the most proud of and that makes me feel. We did that from the beginning. Yeah, makes me feel free. Uh, let's talk about our each of our areas of expertise because I mentioned how in the beginning when we started working together, it was myself, you, and a videographer slash editor. No, in the beginning, it was you and me. We hired, we hired Emma. Yeah. We hired Emma before Emma. We had brand deals, and before Emma, we were yeah, creating, it was just we were creating you. content. I remember I used to like hire hourly these like 
random what are you talking young girls. about i was i was shooting you everywhere we went no no you see you, you don't had, even know you that was nori. before you were part of this you had nori shooting you in front yes, of the house yes that is correct nori our, used to take my nanny. garage photos bless nori my queen i hired i remember a couple of times these young girls that i would find random interesting already monkey d trevi says is your membership exclusive videos or early access exclusive videos and vods so if you guys become youtube members depending there's two tiers okay one tier gets you emojis and the second tier gets you emojis and exclusive videos once a month i post behind the scenes usually cooking related videos though many have requested vlogs so yes i have heard you i have made notes i was thinking about taking you guys to like well, I can't decide yet because Croatia is like pretty private. There's a lot of vloggers going around, so I don't want to disrupt anyone. But I was thinking about places to take you. And then um, uh, uh, you get VODs. So the streams, they become memberships only. And then I clip them. Sometimes I clip them pretty significantly. And then sometimes I don't clip whole segments. So if you're really into my content, which I appreciate it, a lot of people want the VODs because I post like the whole VOD. And then sometimes I only, sometimes I'm too tired and I don't always clip or sometimes I think it's not worth it. So it just depends on like what you, what you want, you know, and special YouTube community posts more coming soon. Yeah, I will post like pictures and stuff that I usually keep um, for other things and do other things with. Um, so I try to keep up, but the videos and the VODs are personally what I'm focused on the most. Um, unless people specifically really want like specific behind the scenes pictures. Uh, but most people really seem to want the VODs, but whatever you guys want, I'm happy to deliver. You know, Kenny says he really has to center himself in all of it. And she's completely incapable of creating this career without him. Well, I think the dilemma is like, they can't, she can't, she couldn't have done the personal brand without him. Cause guys, I'm telling you right now, it's very exhausting. She couldn't have done it without him. I'm just going to be real with you. Right. Like, I'll be real with you right now. She couldn't have done it without him and been a wife and a mom and all these things. It's exhausting. It's, it is exhausting building up a social media, even like, um, bigger content creators that you're thinking of, like, um, Ab and Preach, I think said they didn't really get big until the pandemic when everyone was home. And, um, uh, you know, Destiny is known for basically his editor was one of the reasons he really got successful because he certainly isn't editing all these clips and getting them up. That's why he gets such a big cut, which is so fair. Destiny's so fair in that regard. Like, I wish I could do that. Like, what a fair thing to give an editor. But the editor also makes the brand and now the editor is kind of tied to Destiny, which is great. Like, but that's like what anxiety inducing too as well. Um, but that's great. Like without somebody on the side doing the, it's a full time job just to promote the brand. So in some ways, like they even said they had people right away. Like I take all my own photos. I do everything by myself um, because I just had to learn it. Because again, like I can't ask people to do things for free from me. I have like a real issue around it. So I try really hard not to rely on people doing things for free for me. Um, but it is exhausting. So in some ways, he is definitely 50% of this brand. And look, that used to be a dream of mine. I used to have a dream that my partner would do this with me, would help me build a brand, like edit all my videos or do all these things or help me. The dilemma is like when you're building a personal brand, you have to have also a partner that's business minded. And because he is, it actually is great. It kind of is great. But if he's not business minded, then it's kind of exhausting. You know what I mean? Right? So it is that thing too. like. In some ways, like, I understand his desire to take credit because, like, yeah, it's like, where would he be without it? Like, where would she be without it, right? Probably not as successful. And same with our editors and same with our people who do our photography and same with a team, same with a manager, same with a lot of content creators, a lot of the talent. They're not, they're showing up. They're not producing. They're not doing lighting. They're not doing sound. They're not doing, it's really rare when you're doing it all. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, uh, let me see. You should watch Blair White on Jubilee next. Um, I actually watched it with a caller. So one of my callers wanted to watch it with me. So I watched it with him and also, um, Jubilee tends to flag my videos. So on the discord, we do Jubilee events. That's officially what we're doing now. So since Jubilee keeps flagging me, we have a Jubilee event on the weekend. I don't remember when I planned it for Saturday night. When did I plan it for guys? 
And uh, we're going to be doing a Jubilee viewing event uh, about can lesbians use he, use he, him pronouns if you guys want to join us for that. But Jubilee flags my video, my streams, not my videos, but my streams. And it's really frustrating. So I've just, you know, we're doing it on Discord because that's allowed. You know? Randomly on Instagram being like, hey, can you assist me for the day? And we would like take brand pictures okay. or whatever. And then you started working with me. You were taking my pictures and you were very much resistant to it. Um, but then you got better. I, come on, give me the credit. I made you the Instagram husband. No, you did. the Because you didn't tell me what you were doing. Because we would go out for dinner and you're like, okay, you got to take a picture of me. I took a picture. I'm like, okay, here's a picture. No, no, no. It's not like this. You got to get the light like this. You got to do this. And you got to put the angle. And I'm like... It's, I didn't understand it was for business. Right. So I was like, why are we doing this? I go, can we just go to dinner? We're here to meet people. Everyone's waiting inside. We're already late. Right. Now you want to stand outside the restaurant and you want me to do a photo shoot for what? So exhausting. Let me tell you. I'm so bad at it. I'm so bad. My Instagram, when is the last time I posted? Oh, I'm so bad at my job. This is what I'm saying. I'm bad at my job. I am like, I need... I need to build my Insta... Oh, it's so exhausting though. God, taking a photo. Hello? It's like only when I want to and like, you know, what happened to the movies and Britney's discord? I mean, movies are still an option, too. I'm more focused on like right now we've shifted goals to be more focused on like documentaries. We watched a documentary last week um, and other things like that. But actual movies, I haven't been in the mood. We just do what I want. And like I haven't been in the mood for movies. But if there's a movie you guys really want to watch, we can watch it. What purpose? Valeria, come on, let's go. <laughs> yes, but you you were trained uh, pretty well and pretty fast and you caught up with it. And then we got Emma in for our to do editing and video. Correct. And then slowly we started adding people in. But again, we used to work very not, closely not together. Not so slowly, but okay. I mean... It was all kind of in conjunction with the revenue that was coming in. Yeah. So as sales came in, we decided to reinvest, continue to reinvest back into expertise. Yeah. And what that helped was to slowly build out a company and slowly build um, the separation of work of our departments. Like we each decided, okay, this is what you're in charge of and this is what I'm in charge of. And I think that helped us a lot, at least for me. I think that's what I needed. I just needed like, okay, I need my own mm -hmm. kind of agency to do the things that I want to do creatively. You know what they feel like to me? They feel like a good couple who's trying their best, but they're still unsure of what they're doing. I really think that, I really do. There's something about it where they both feel very insecure to me, which is probably why he doesn't feel mentally that off from her. Even though he says in business, he's waiting for her to figure certain things out. I think they're both insecure in a different way. Like he doesn't have a dream. He's chasing money and stability because he come f comes from a broken home, which he said earlier. So he doesn't have a dream. And since so she's finding her dream and he's helping her with that dream, it's also his dream by building a successful business. So it's kind of like perfect, but I don't think he's like much ahead of her. And I, and I think they're probably, you know what I mean? Well, Seven, you don't know that, right? They both know they are scammers. Well, I don't know. Again, what's a scammer? A scammer is like giving, uh, for me, I like the the idea that a scam is like, saying you're selling something that you're not. So I, I don't know what a scam means in their regard. Like, I'm not sure that they're scammers now, right? You know, okay, seven inappropriate comment, right? That's an inappropriate comment saying like she's the hoe and he's a cheap ass scammer pimp. Like we don't know that. That's not what we're getting right now. And even if they he did do his things with Facebook and stuff, that could be in the past and he needs to fix that. But this stuff now, like this could just be their new turning point. But I don't know that he's not doing like, again, if he's breaking the rules, he needs to like be accountable for that, blah, blah, blah. But with this stuff here, this is normal social media stuff. This is just everything they're saying now is very normal by the book social media stuff, right? So for me, I'm just like, yeah, this is like, this is basically what it is. So I don't know, like a part of me can't be very critical of it. But it does sound like they're figuring out themselves together. Like, I'm not sure he knows who he is, like as a conscientious, like a consciousness, like. Because I'm not really getting who he is in this podcast. I'm not getting his like care. Like, who is he? Like when I hear Mark Cuban talk or Kevin O'Leary, like I know who they are. 
it's they are telling you very confidently who they are. But him, doesn't he kind of feel actually don't both of them kind of feel that way? Wait. Oh, <gasps> do both of them feel like beige? Like both of them feel like I'm eating chicken, but it doesn't taste like anything. Like I'm not I don't know what it is. Like what is their brand? Oh, wait, that's the oh, that's what it is. What is the brand? Are they selling lifestyle fashion? Because even their Instagrams, it just looked like if you liked them, you'd like their Instagram. But their Instagram didn't seem very brandy. But she has 2 million followers. Are they fake followers? Is that the scam? Oh, my God. Seven. Seven. You could say those things about Destiny and you don't. You're, you're being too emotional. You know, for a fact, you support Max and Destiny with such passion where you're going after this guy you barely Googled. Relax. Yeah, but like, you know what I mean? Like everyone is a sociopath on the internet to an extent and everyone's kind of a scammer because they're all selling bullshit in some way. Come on. But is he a scammer scammer? Like a real scammer? You know, fake followers, of course. Is it of course? Do we know that? Do we know that? You know, do we know? Do we know these things about them? I don't know. I don't know. There's something here though that feels something. They're boring. More, yeah, they're a little bit like, do they have a thing? What's their thing? Yeah, for me, they are only interesting because they have an unconventional relationship. Yeah, something about their relationship to me is the most interesting thing. You know? Hmm. Let's go to the point where they, where like most people watched. Lee would be like, no, I said that. Not let it affect our kind of personal life. It's actually funny. She texted me today and she's like, you and I haven't talked in a while. Which is a good thing, which means that, you know, everything Rachel is running is smooth. CEO, Rachel's our way. CEO. Yeah. She goes, which is a good thing because it means that everything's running smoothly. Yeah. But I'd like to just catch up with you. And I love it when she does that because like, mm. it's like she knows that I'm busy doing what I do and you're busy and everything. And she, she caught up with me. So at this point, yeah, like I, I continue to oversee things. And I started my own podcast, which, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that I'm doing. It's literally the first time in my life where I've started doing something with zero understanding of whether it's going to make money or not. I know. I love it. Hmm. I think you needed it. It's fulfilling to me because I enjoy the subject matter that I'm talking about and I enjoy the people that I'm talking about and I'm, in, I'm really enjoying the connections that I'm making. Mm. Like, I, well, you know, like we had dinner with um, John and Ksenia and I interviewed, mm -hmm. I interviewed John from Curated, from the car mm -hmm. dealership and he has these classic cars and stuff. Such a fascinating guy and such a fun story. This is somebody who like, you know, we're friends now yeah. and it, it, it's, it's great. But anyways, yeah. I feel like that. Yeah, it's like they're chasing status and maybe feeling like they've made it. Disco says, I feel like they make their ego gap uh, or their age gap relationship their only personality traits. Well, I think it's a selling point. It's a good branding point. So if you're going to brand relationships, you take the thing that's weird about it, right? Like I do think that's good for branding, right? I think that that makes sense. They actually, I think, would be almost more successful, but they're going more in the business route. They want to be seen as a legacy. If they're building a legacy company, that means they want to be quote unquote serious with the big kids. So it's kind of like, mm. That helped us building that structure, helped us to kind of separate our own roles. And now it's different. I feel like now we kind of went up to a different level because uh, even three years ago, we we're operating differently than the way we operate now. Where to your point, now you're even higher on the like overseeing and now it's kind of Rachel and I that are more in it and mm. every day mm -hmm. and then you're just kind of which was the goal so listen for the record I think it took some time but I'm very happy with the way everything's going but when shit goes down then yeah. I, st I step in and you're I take care of it well, I'm a firefighter I take I take care of it yeah but it's rare yeah because it's got to be like a five alarm fire and mm -hmm. that's when I step in but mm -hmm. everything now, like Rachel's taking, she probably takes care of five alarm fires that don't even get to me to her credit. Yeah. So I'm only taking care of stuff that really like comes across my desk. How do we actually deal with disagreements? Oh, here we go. On the business side and not let yeah. it affect our oh, kind of personal lives. Point. You know, the thing is, is that they're not, there's no such thing. There's no disagreements. They're not. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you why they're not. Because you and I have the common goal. You and I have a common goal That's true. to win. Mm -hmm. For you and I to win as a couple, as individuals, for our kids to win, for everybody to win and everything to get better. So the top line kind of goal, there's no disagreement there. Mm -hmm. It's within that goal, what are the things that happen that we don't see eye to eye on? Yeah. But the goal is the same. So we disagree. We 
So mm. we agree on what's important. Yes. You know, it's how to get there. Yeah. Like we may want to kind of steer it in a bit of a different way. So I think the first thing is when you're asking me how do we do it, the first thing is first identifying mm -hmm. that the high level goal we're in agreement on. Mm -hmm. Once you decide that you're in agreement on the high level goal and what we're doing and how, like, what we want to do to get there. Yeah, kind of work backwards. Then everything yeah. else is kind of simple. Yeah. So the first thing we do, just like we do in all aspects of our life, is I drop my ego and so do you. Mm -hmm. So none of our discussions are ego driven. Mm -hmm. We don't care who wins the debate on how to do something. We care about getting to, a, to the solution. Okay, And That's for good. both of us, whether we get there and it's... I'm still working on it. You I still have an ego about it? Sometimes I feel like I still have resistance. Like I feel like I just want to be like, no, I said that. I, some, I feel like sometimes you just want to be resistant because you just... Yeah, they feel so empty. Yeah, there's something about them I can't quite hold on to. Like I'm watching two people, like, you know, we, we, we'll do this, we'll watch. Like they have no personality. Is that it? They have no personality. They have strong personalities, but they have no personality at the same time. Is that it? Like... I don't know, you know, something about them feels like I can't grasp it. Just for the fancies of it? No, I just think you're still, you, you're still trying to prove to yourself, not even to me. Right. You're still trying to prove to yourself something, but I don't think, I, yeah, it's, I've seen much worse. You're, you're good. But yeah, I definitely think that we, we work backwards because I think we're so aligned on the big vision. We're able to have the kind of communication that takes us step by step of what we need to align with in yeah. order to get a resolution. And I think that working together, now that I actually think about it, the fact that we work together, I think improved us and our communication and the way we handle life on like on our personal life, the way we run our household, the way we raise our kids. I think it definitely... Ooh, Nero says not graspable, not graspable, correlates with being fake, I think. It's like they present sort of superficial. Yes. Ooh, that's what it is. It's like superficial, you know? Like it's it's like something about them feels okay. So okay. If you it's okay, I'll make the decision for us. Watch this. Cause I am curious. So let's go to their other. Okay, so this is her podcast. It has a million followers and two million followers on Instagram. Okay. Okay, her videos are getting like no views. This is why I wonder if their views are inflated or why are they popular? 3K views, 17,000 views, 10,000 views, 33,000 views, like 62,000 views. Like this is okay, but for a channel that has a million subscribers and is new, right? This is like a new channel. What's her most popular? Five years ago, okay, baby, see, family stuff. Vlogging, fashion is her most popular. Something is going on. We're going to, let's dive into it. Because something, this, is this what the, is this why it feels fake? Hmm. Yeah, even, yeah, their videos, are these, who are these guests? Do we even need, know these guests? Or are they trying to make it look like these guests are people? Like, you know what I'm saying? Something about it. Look at her shorts. Oh, good point. Look at her shorts. Are her shorts are what killing it? 3,000 views, 48,000 views, 18,000 views, 47,000 views, 54,000 views. I mean, they're doing okay on shorts, but they're also not like, you know, they're they're doing okay. 100,000 views, 200,000 views. Here, almost, here, a million. Is it up enough? Up my eyes, eyes. Something, 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 something. Pop star, I have a stage fright. What is this? I muted the video so I wouldn't get copyrighted. How did this get a million views? Is it the song? A couple of weeks. So I'm turning 33 in a couple of weeks. My husband, how I feel like I'm living in a simulation in a way because I feel like I'm 15, but yet I wake up. And I'm, I look 15, I feel 15, but then I have this adult life. Like I have a career, I'm, I'm in a marriage, I have children, I have three children. I'm raising humans, okay? And 
I feel like I'm kind of like in a limbo. Like, where do I belong? Who am I? Where am I? Not like I know who I am, the essence of me, but like the roles just, I don't know. Maybe it's like a birthday thing. And so Okay. Gonna- well, she probably feels 15 because she got married at 20 to a guy who was 40 and never had a chance to like live her fucking life. Was that her mom? She's pretty. Run fast for your mother, run fast for- it is so bad. I want to give you a zero, but that's not possible. So I give you a one. It is so- okay. It's pretty good. Satisfaction I feel right now. I got married in Italy. Am I saying you copied me by getting married in Italy? Who performed at my wedding? Can you let me know if like my new styles are okay? I- I'm trying to reinvent myself. So for work, I thought this was cool because when you double the bu- Yeah, look at me, look at me. You're looking, my taste good, but I just had to redirect my cooking. Yeah. Yeah, you know what it feels like? It's really hard to be... Look, social media is hard. And if it's in any way not fitting the vibe, it's difficult. So one, if people aren't interested in their actual, like, who they are. And two, even if they're doing trends that everyone is doing, like, there are TikTok couples that I've seen, some successful and some not, but some of them have such a good vibe together that when they do the trends, it's like so much fun watching them do it, even though they know it's fake. So when you're a couple who's like making, see, are they comedy? Are they family vlog? Are they fashion? Are they business? I think they're not choosing enough of a niche maybe. I don't know. Something about it seems weird. You know? Yeah, maybe she got all the subs through, oh, here. Oh, wait, this one has 8 million views. The one with the Beyonce at the concert, that had 8 million views on shorts. I mean, damn. Yeah, I don't know. There is definitely something that's missing, though. But so, let's do this. So, again, like, good for them. But I'm sorry. I'm just like... Hold on. Videos. Popular. Yeah, it's all pregnancy videos are actually the most popular. Like, all her family vlog stuff. Here, hold on. Five years ago. Okay, you guys, we're doing it at 8 a.m. We are shooting our marriage Q&A. We posted an Instagram post and we asked you guys if you have any questions. We didn't choose the questions, Jess did. So we will see. And you haven't read them yet, right? I haven't read them yet. So it's like real, real time. Are you ready? Gary Lipovetsky. First question, how to not get bored of the relationship after a long time together? Remember when we first met and we had like all this like exciting stuff and we were traveling everywhere and doing stuff and Gary always told me, Budni Dni, you said, what is Budni I don't know. Something, something. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. There's something very like, this is are we soulmates? Actually you did and you made the right choice. Before we continue, can you please introduce yourself to um, our listeners? Well, my name is Gary Lupovetsky. I'm the other half of the Lipovetsky team. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm Valeria's husband. You know, when you say introduce myself, I mean, what other information would you, would you like me to? Ah, uh, see? 
he it's like they have a hard time actually sharing like share like share more tell us like what's the vibe what's going on who are we well, to disclose no that was good information that's it yeah. I'm Gary Lipovetsky, Valeria's husband. Boring, pretty privileged content. Yeah. For the purposes of this episode, Gary Lipovetsky, Valeria Lipovetsky's husband, or, you know, other half, it works very well. So you did great. Thanks. Today we are talking about soulmates. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever had this conversation before, actually, digging really into the whole aspect of soulmates and what it means to us i mean honestly they seem more and more compatible as i watch because like like yeah they they're like if beige married beige you know yeah like they're not it's almost like they're not giving us a lot are they they're giving us it's I can't grasp on to it. Like I there's nothing about them. Like someone's like, oh, what are they like? I'd be like, um, I don't know. Like, what is the thing? You know, like what's their thing? Because I think that our definition of soulmates may be different and may have been influenced from different things throughout our lives. So I wanted to dig a bit more into it. Initially, when I wanted to speak to this topic, I thought Let's have an expert and let's have, you know, all these kind of people that talk about relationships and all these things. And then when I started thinking about it a little bit more, um, I actually thought that it would be the best conversation if it's with someone that actually is in this relationship. You know, both of us working together, raising a family together. Like <laughs> Valentina says, like, are they having fun? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, Alex had disagreed. It's different generations. If it's like they don't have the connection, feels like a couple from the Middle East where the wife is just there. Maybe like she's like there's no fun and she's miserable. Really? I don't feel like they're miserable. I feel like there's there's um like I think there's probably a lot of like performativeness that's giving them anxiety. Maybe, you know, OK, hold on. I just had it in my head again. Oh, I don't care to be a. This is his channel. So his channel has 4,000 subscribers, almost 5,000. So his podcast must have just started. This was six months ago. Model, it's not for me. I want to work at McDonald's. So he has 150,000 views on this video, but 5,000 subscribers. And 500 comments. 150,000 views, 500 comments, and 5,000 subscribers. Mm. Mm. that's possible usually with a small channel the subscribers don't go up believe it or not unless you get a really big hit but usually the comments do so with algorithms i've gotten millions of views on some of my videos that have gone private now i've sub i've collabed with big youtubers but the subscribers don't go up right but the comments usually do something goes up you know, so I kind of feel like the comments are really low. The views are high and the subs are low. And usually it's two highs and a low. So usually I get a ton of comments, views and subscribers say the same. My subscribers never grow. My my partner was like, hey, what are you going to do when you reach 100,000 subscribers? Because, you know, I was like, um, it's never happened in 12 years. I have literally made $100,000 a year and not $100,000, like not 100,000 subscribers. Like, that's what's so funny about my job where I'm like, why don't my subscribers go up, right? And it is one of the things where a lot of it is branding. A lot of it is not having the same niche for what people should expect when they come in. That's why, like, I've pivoted towards streaming. So the consistency really matters. And it's really helping, by the way. I really appreciate that you guys being here. It really, it, it does a lot. You know, like, knowing that this is, like, a good consistency for me, for you. It's really nice. It's I think this has been the most comfortable thing I've done in a long time is just be here but again, it's like, OK, so that's starting to go up, which is like really exciting because new voices, new conversations. But it always like this is interesting. This this is interesting. But they must be making they're probably making great money on her channel, you know, and even this channel, if it's monetized, that's still good money. McDonald's. We don't have money. We don't have money. 
this restaurant and then in the evening she would Moving like from change Russia to Israel. her hair and makeup and go on stage and sing so i was with her throughout the days um and o'clock daytime nighttime this wasn't this wasn't uh, i mean by he's not talking into the mic no means did you grow up wealthy but just from conversations i've had with you you never felt any kind of class struggle you never felt that you were or, or you did, I don't know. What was your, as a child growing up, what was your perception of your financial status? I think I didn't, I think I didn't have any perception of financial status until I was probably in high school when I started seeing and like observing other people and what they had. But I don't think I was raised that way. And I think that's why I don't really have attachment to anything material because it never meant anything to me. It was never a way. Okay, look, ultimately, I don't wanna keep like ragging on them or something. Oh, oh, this is where the scam come. Okay, they're not scamming, but this is, I don't know if they're scamming, but here's where the vibes come in. Okay, we're going to switch topics, but here's where the, the vibes are coming in. Look at this. Do you guys see this thumbnail right here? The thumbnail for that podcast we were just looking at two seconds ago says, from a small town in Russia to fame, marriage, and motherhood. And the quote of her picture is, I've, I never wanted to be famous. Are you famous? Are they selling that she's more popular than she is? And that's why it feels dishonest. You know what I mean? Like, is the reason we're not having, like, we're not comfortable with them is because like he has no followers. He's a small channel. She has all the followers, but doesn't have the views to back it up. Her Instagram even though she has her Instagram, even though she has Valen, what's her name? No, shoot. What's her name? Valen. Fuck. Even though she has 2 million followers, does she have even the comments to back it up or the activity? Let me see her Instagram again. So her Instagram has... 2 million followers, that's still not famous. It's a big following, but it's not fame, right? Look, it's fake though. This is a fake, these are fake. Look at this, guys. 2 million followers, 2,000 likes, and only 48 comments. The views are fake. I'm guessing, I'm making up in Minecraft. I'm not making an accusation. This is my opinion. 28 comments on 21,000 likes, 194, okay, ooh, 8,000 likes. 7,000 7, comments. It's a little bit better. But this is a partnership. Okay. I'm telling you, there's something here that feels weird. You know what I mean? There's not enough engagement on this, like on the post. There's just not enough engagement for the numbers to make sense to my brain. Who, who allegedly, thank you, who has, who's another Instagrammer who has like similar, <sighs> yeah, it's got to be fake, right? It's got to, it's, I'm telling you something about it seems weird. She follows, hold on. Who follows her? Wait, that's not a good way to look at it. They have 2 million followers. Who famous... Yeah, who's, who's, so they're hoping to get famous by pretending to be famous. That's, but it's not working. That's what it feels like. It feels like they're pretending to be famous to get famous. That's sort of the Kardashian model, to be fair, right? There's a Kardashian model where Paris and, and Kim K talked about this, how they had to go to paparazzi events and put themselves out there, but their parents were already popular. They already had something, but these two don't have anything. But yeah, that's what it feels like. You know what I mean? You know? But I'm not sure if it's true. What's Who's somebody with 2 million followers on Instagram? Um... Bree Sky, right? Doesn't Bree Sky, we just reviewed her. Sky Bree, sorry. Sky Bree? Okay, real Sky Bree, to be fair, she's an OnlyFans model, but they're going for more traditional. So just in contrast, Sky Bree has 2.5 million followers. She has 300,000 likes and 4,000 comments. 6,000 comments, 300,000 likes. 
200,000 likes, 5,000. Now she, to be fair, is probably appealing to men. Not probably, is. And the other girl, Valerie, Valerina, what's her name? Is appealing to women and women do engage less. Like men are more likely to engage on thirst traps, which are beautiful. I love this. I'm, I love, I literally love this girl's vibe. Like I love her Instagram. Anyways, obsessed. Um, but our girl, oops, go back. Our girl here, she's appealing more to moms and wholesome energy, but they're not very curated. Her fo- their photos, they're not good enough to stand out. But why do they have 2 million followers? Who are the 2 million? And then her, you know what I'm saying? That's the only thing that's giving me the red flag, right? That's the only thing that's giving me the red flag is like, I'm just not seeing enough of it to like, it feels like they're trying to sell something they aren't yet in order to be that thing. You know what I mean? You know, stop vegan. Don't fight with seven in the comments. He's very unique. Seven, stop being so unique. Okay. Stop posting conspiracy theories. Thank you. Um, who did you say? Look at, hold on. Who did you say? Sarah. Who's Sarah? Oh, what is it? Safari. This girl, 2 million subscribers. Let's see. Who's she? I saw the sign and it opened up my eyes. I saw the sign. Ooh, fitness. Oh, we love <laughs> mommy. Okay, we love. Okay. Oh, 100,000, only 600 comments. Ooh, 400,000, 1,000 comments. 100,900 comments. Okay, okay. 690, 100,000, 300,000 likes, 1,000 comments. 200,000 likes, 1,600 comments. Okay. Less thirst trappy, but cute. 100,000, 1,000 likes. Okay. I think for her vibe, that could make sense maybe. I don't know if I would assume it's rigged because like that seems like much more than 28, 28 comments. Our girl was literally doing 28 comments. You know what I mean? Like 28 comments. So interesting. So anyways, um, yeah, I don't know. When I Google them, nothing significant comes up in a way that makes me trust the information. I don't like I'm glad YouTube gave me their algorithm, like the algorithm gave me these this couple. But like, see, I'm not getting I'm not getting. It's interesting. There's something here that feels. Dishonest you know, but I'm glad I engaged with it. I'm glad some of you knew who they were, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Interesting. I'm going to keep up with the Snopes thing. I am curious if it comes out more information, but the fact that they're being investigated, Mariah says their content is typical enough that people would forget they followed, but wouldn't engage fair beige. It's beige. You know, it's the fake podcast podcast. Yeah. Mm hmm. Nova says, I still feel like a lot of those comments were probably inappropriate and filtered out or deleted, like on her post or in his posts. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I wonder, in the way that he was bragging that he knew Chris Jenner for a second, I wonder if like they keep touching fame, but it doesn't really come to them fully. Like, guys, even the Kardashians got to keep up. All these people got to keep up. You can't just like, have a one hit wonder and live off of it for the rest of your life unless you're really lucky like you do music or something. People really struggle out here to keep brands going, you know what I mean? And um I just feel like they're trying to sell a narrative that they're like pop like he keeps saying you're famous. Like I know you don't want to say that, but you are. But like are you? <gasps> Honey dip chocolate says just checked and I'm actually subscribed to her but forgot. This is why I don't pay attention to subscribers because all, all I care about is my money going up. All I literally care about is making more money. I do not care about fame or being popular or subscribers because you see how they're like, I do not care. All I care about is like, can I pay my bills? Can I save for my retirement? That's all I care about. And then of course, like I loving my job. I feel like when you're focused on subscribers, you forget like, are those subscribers coming back and watching your content? Cause guys, you watching my content is everything. You literally just watching my content is everything and I am that's 
that's great. That's amazing. That's all I, that's everything. Life was a 